Hey guys, how are you going? Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. Hope you're all having a splendid day. And of course, autodidactic means to be self-educated. And in this world, we need to be self-educated because, as we know, his story is not our story. Uh, history is a set of lies agreed upon. And of course, that's why we need to be self-educated, because if we are not... The only choice we have left is to believe what other people tell us. And of course, as usual, that's kind of what I want to get into. And uh, this is, I don't know how long this video will be. I've, I was just watching a an interview about giants. And I was just thinking, because we've got this, you know, this question of giants always comes up, right? We have the giant architecture and you know, we have all this stuff. Uh, but it still, still seems to be a question, you know, did the giants exist? Um, and that's kind of why, why I want to make this, because the giants definitely did exist, because uh, we have their bones. We have the remains of them. We have stories, we have news reports, you know, sort of legends and myths and things. And so they definitely were real. And what happened to them, we're not, obviously we're not sure. And that's one of the things that we're digging into. So, um, remember, do not respect anyone's authority, especially Cartman's, with his little star there. And there's another star. All right, so let's get in and have a chat about giants. So uh, the plan for this video is really just to click on my file. As you'll see, I have a couple. This is my uh, Tartaria file, and I've got giants here. So I thought we'd click on that and see what pops up. Um, I haven't had a look at this for a little while. I do have some videos on Autodidactic Main Channel about giants that I did, uh, you know, probably probably over a year ago. So. It's probably time to have a bit of a look, you know, retouch on giants. And here we have a picture with a couple of giants. And uh, giant down here, giant farina. Um, is that French? Not sure, but they're having some kind of a party here. We have a couple of giants. Of course, uh, you know, we have all over the place in a city near you giant structures that you know a giant to the point that they just don't make sense and they don't even make sense from the point of where did they get all the materials uh you know they really that they, they really are an anomaly and you know we have a lot of a lot of them left but the biggest ones the really big ones have pretty much all been torn down and of course we have photos of giants now, you know, you show these pictures and many people say, oh, this is just a really short guy and this is just a above average woman. Um, yeah, I don't know. don't think so. This dude looks like he's, you know, not tall, but I'd say he's, what, five, six, five, eight, which would make her, you know, six, six or something. She's not a small woman. And of course, we have the, the genes, don't we? You know, we have giants that pop up all the time. You know, Andre the Giant. And all these other giants around. Here is Brunhilde. Um, Dutch. And look at the hat she's got on. But clearly this lady's standing on a chair. And she's still, you know, about shoulder height. So if that's an average woman, say what, 5'5"-ish. Five, five then you can add a foot there and a foot there. So you know, she's a big girl. 
No, seven foot, I would think. And look at that headdress. What is it? A peacock or something? Or a butterfly or a bird? Not really peacock feathers, but some kind of bird on her head. Ah, there's just some amazing architecture. Look at that. See how it's all been stepped in? Now imagine what the acoustics in there would be. And of course down here we have our, our cymatic resonance patterns. And, and look how detailed they are too. Look how deep, how you know intricate they get on the outside here, even coming out, um, which is what you would expect from music being played in a place like this. That's just insane. Um, another giant. So these, you know, these giants, you know, were everywhere. And of course, you know, you'll notice these these photos, right? They're all back from the 1850s to sort of 1900s. You know, so it was a, it seemed to be a thing, you know, not an uncommon thing. It might, might not have been common, uh, but it, it doesn't look like it was uncommon. Um, this, I don't know, this lady does look a little short if you're looking at the chair and the desk there, but you know, she's still a big lady. And of course, you know, there's different giants that we talk about. And here, here we go. This, of course, I mean, look at the size of this door. So you can imagine the giants that we've just looked at, you know, they'd probably be up here somewhere. So so still this door would be giant to them. Um, of course, ridiculously oversized for, for the average human. Um, so yeah, different sizes. How many, you know, how, this is the thing like, you know, how old are these giant buildings and were these built by bigger, bigger people? Because I think when we talk of giants... Uh, we're talking of more than one uh, kind of giant, one type of giant, should I say, because uh, we seem to have different heights. Uh, here we go, some more cymatics. And of course, you know, all this giant architecture uh, just, you know, built so well, designed so well, you know, they were obviously master craftsmen, you know, master engineers, they knew what they were doing. Oh, but the story we get whenever you hear anything about giants is they were just, you know, big, stupid, you know, blundering oafs kind of thing. You know, like Jack and the Beanstalk and all that. I suppose we do get the big friendly giant, but that, that's about it. Apart from that, they're all, you know, de uh, portrayed as bad. Which is, you know, probably tells you something, right? Now, this is obviously a drawing back in the day. But you can see, they, these are the giant, giant buildings. Uh, these are people. You can see, leaning up against this pillar. So, I mean, you know, how tall is that roof? I mean, seriously. It's, you know, so, so this is, you know, is this from an older time, you know, than the actual, the architecture we see now that's giant? And, of course, we get big cars. When you look back, the early cars, a lot of them were really big. And I've always wondered why. And, you know, maybe they were for big people. And then, you know, smaller people got in them, you know, extended the pedals, and then they're lighter and they've got a big, fast car. What do you think? There was also a lot of little cars as well back in the day. Uh, so, you know, again, she's reaching up to the handles. You know, old world street light popping out there, of course. Um, so yeah, trying to get in. And this, you know, this, this would be, you know, an, an average door for, you know, those giants we saw in the photos. That would be normal. You know, so this is the sort of the first, you know, the small giant kind of architecture. And then we have the ridiculously oversized architecture. Oh my God. And look at, you know, this is the thing. Look at this. I mean, is that not ridiculous? You know, we... You know, people don't even think of designing things like this because there's no use for them, right? Why would you? I mean, it looks nice, yeah, but you can make things look nice, very nice, without having, without going to all this construction. This is all part of the structure. So whoever built this, you know, they were... 
or on a different level to us. Uh, of course, you know, we have statues. Now, this is a child, obviously, but I mean, look at the size of that child. It's a very small child. So, uh, I believe that is Alexander, is it? Some Roman, anyway, with that haircut. And of course, you know, we have the stories of people like Alexander the Great being a giant, uh, Genghis Khan, um, you know, sort of seven footers, you know, seven, eight footers. Um, as you can see, this guy is holding some giant cutlery. I'm not sure, you know, this may have been made, but, you know, interesting pick. Uh, again, uh, what's that say? Severgio Diagardi, um, holding up the earth, as you can see around here. You know, they're ball earth. Um, this is the horoscopes, and this is, you know, Atlas, the original story of Atlas. You know, we're told that he holds the world on his shoulders, uh, but in the actual um, original story and the original statues that are still out there, he's actually holding... Um, the astrological line, the whatever you call that, the, the band of astrology, let's call it that. Uh, where are we? Down here are people. So again, you know, ridiculously oversized structures, all old world. You know, we know what they look like. Covered in statues, columns, the whole lot. And these arches, don't we get these just a lot? You know, they're everywhere. You know, obviously we get the arches, you know, that aren't part of building, or were they all parts of buildings? You know, like the Arc de Triomphe and stuff, you know, maybe we've just got it from here up. Who knows? But you do see that, you know, that obviously the arches everywhere, but also you see it a lot in buildings. You know, the old, you know, if you can find the old world buildings that were built like that, but it looks like many of them were. And again, what were they for? Was it tech? Was it energy? Was it to park an airship in and re, you know, um, reload passengers? Who knows? <laughs> Don't know why all these pictures are in giants, but, um, that, is that brick? That's brick. Wow. That is ridiculous. And look at this at the top here. One, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight pointed star. You can see it's got another eight pointed star coming off it. That is cool. And this is the thing. Everything was, you know, geometry and fractals and, you know, sort of cymatic patterns and all this kind of stuff. All to do with frequency. Uh, this is a buried building. Look at that. So this is just the top and the whole building's been buried and that's like the steeple thing. And we get these, you know, I've showed uh, pictures of like old, you know, castle uh, towers and turrets that are just literally the, the tower by themselves. But what's underneath? Uh, again, more giants. And this is an Indian. Well, a Native American, you know, the whole Indian thing. Uh, there, there may actually be more to that name, by the way, rather, uh, you know, apart from, you know, the fake Christopher Columbus um, hitting the West Indies. Um, because, of course, at that time they had world maps, and we know they did, so it's a silly story anyway. Uh, but uh, I digress. Indian. Uh, so, again, this does look like a small, smallish woman. Um, but even if she's, you know, even if she's five foot, this lady's, you know, six, you know, that's what, six foot there, so she's six and a half foot or something. Um, and look at the hands on it, wow. <laughs> um, Patagonia in South America. Of course, the Patagonian giants, um, it's in, it's in the diaries of, of Cortez. I believe it was Cortez, yeah. His diary are the Patagonian Giants, and of, and also uh, up. I think John Levi showed showed a map, but there's definitely maps uh, that show North America and the sort of um, I don't know what you know, sort of Midwest sort of region, and it's zoned uh, Giants. 
and also uh, I think the island in California and there was an island called Giants and you know all we've got stories um, you know all the natives talk of stories um, of giants they found bones everywhere in the bear that like literally America's covered in them covered in them they had a dig um, on this interview I was listening to I'll leave the link below actually it's pretty interesting and he said that in one just in one uh, mound they found 7,000 giant skeletons and again this is the kind of stuff that they were building and we're told this is just all you know religious right for, for the glory of God but I mean really I think we're a bit we passed that kind of a fairy tale. Uh, so this is, yeah, someone who's dug out or who's found a sarcophagus. So how big is a person in this sarcophagus? I mean, he looks like, you know, average dude. He's probably 5'6", five, 5'8", five, um, which would make this, what, 10 foot? So how big is a person in there? Is that an eight, eight or nine foot person? <laughs> More amazing architecture. Look at these, these look like liars. You know, mandolins or something. Okay, so here we go. Chimung's, uh, is that right? Chimung's predecessors, huge giants, were seven feet tall and had horns. This is Wednesday, July 12th, 1916. One of the most remarkable scientific discoveries in history made here 68 skeletons of men living 700 years ago, unearthed between Saya and Waverley. Men were old at 40. Um, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, but this is an actual news article, uh, you know, a newspaper article reporting that they found 68 skeletons. And when you look into these stories, they're always, they're not that old. They're 600, 500 years old, not, not thousands of years. Um, so here it basically just gets into age and sort of saying, you know, that they think that they didn't live very long. They kind of skip over the, uh, the giant part. A giant women in Egypt. So again, you see a normal-sized woman here, and then we see giants. Normal-sized man, giants. I mean, this dude's got a big snoz. Looks like someone's painted that onto him. They painted a bird mask on him. He looks like Condor Man. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. Wisconsin Mount Open. Skeleton found of a man over nine feet tall with an enormous skull. Now, does that mean a cone head? Maple Creek, Wisconsin, December 19. One of the three recently discovered mounds in this town has been opened. In it was found the skeleton of a man of gigantic size. The bones measured from head to foot over nine feet tall. So there you go. This was the New York Times, 1897. So, so, you know, they were printing these stories back then, and now uh, they all got wiped. And, of course, you know, we, we, we know about the Smithsonian, right? I mean, that was literally invented to hide history. Monday, July 13, 1908. Not three, eight. Giant skeletons found on coast. Los Angeles, California, July 12th. Uh, William Derbyshire and Jack Stoneberger. That's a nice name. <laughs> Good name for an archaeologist um, of Chicago and Robert Derbyshire of Santa Monica. Contractors have unearthed the skeletons of a gigantic prehistoric man at Santa Monica Beach. The skeleton was over nine feet in height. The New York Times, Christmas Day 1868, reported discovery of a huge skeleton from the Sank. Uh, is it Sank? Sank Rapids Sentinel, December 19, day before yesterday, while the quarrymen employed by the uh, is it Bank Sank Sork 
rapid water power company were engaged in quarrying rock from the dam which is being erected across the Mississippi. At this place, found embedded in the solid granite rock, the remains of a human being of gigantic status, about seven feet below the surface of the ground and about three feet and a half beneath the upper cerium uh, of rock. Uh, gets a bit hard, but basically what they say uh, down here, the grave was 12 feet in length, four feet wide and about three feet in depth and it was uh, carved in to the granite um, and basically there was a giant skeleton in there uh, so it's a bit hard to read but yeah I've read that one before so uh, there you go that was a skeleton that was in um, uh, what did they say Grand Rapids St. Rapids no uh, Mississippi and that one yeah embedded in a coffin that was dug out of solid granite uh, oh, pff, wow okay some uh, big ornate doors and of course, I've mentioned this before. This this wrought ironwork is everywhere, and this you know this like fern frond Fibonacci type shape design. It is everywhere. It's even on um, you know the, the Vatican use it on on their clothing still. But you see it everywhere in wrought iron, um, you know, carved into wood, into buildings, clothing, just everywhere. And here's this dude, and look at these faces. But yeah, um, what's that? That looks like it's to get into. Is that a cemetery? But again, they, they, so these are the. I mean, that's almost like a mid size, isn't it? Because, you know, the sort of seven footers are here. The giant ones seem to be. Oh, I don't know, am I looking at that wrong? It's pretty big anyway. You know, so who, who built this and for what purpose? Because clearly, you know, these look like. There's no machinery, they just open on hinges, so they seem to be made for people that can easily open them. Okay, well, there you go. This is the kind of stuff they were into building. And again, just, you, you know, fractal geometry. So what does it all mean? And again, you see here the uh, that design. Fern fond kind of design, it's just everywhere. Ah, uh, here we go, yeah, giants from Sumeria, right? Uh, Sumerian giant, normal sized people. And what do we have here? Someone holding. I mean, they say that's the sun disc, don't they? It's also, what's it called? The, the symbol of Ishtar. You know, it looks like it's got a lot to do with the sky to me. Cardiff, here you go, Mr. Lead K, giants from your area. Uh, maybe related to, or maybe related to Cardiff Giant. Okay, so there's the Cardiff Giant. Because of course, um, well, the, the UK, England was called Albion uh, back in the day, and apparently it was inhabited by giants. This one says Winnemucca, January 23rd, uh, 1904 from the St. Paul Globe, workmen engaged in digging gravel here today uncovered at a depth of about 12 feet a lot of bones, part of the skeleton of a gigantic human being. Dr. Samuels examined them and pronounced them to be the bones of a man who must have been nearly 11 feet in height. There you go, he was a big one. In Winnemucca. I'm not sure where Winnemucca is. No doubt someone will let us know in the comments. Bones of a giant found St. Paul, May 23rd. A strut of heroic, what? Also, and Shetland formation has been discovered among the relics of the mound builders. Oh, here we go, the mound builders. And there's mounds all through the Americas. To the Todd River Valley, the mound was 60 foot in diameter and about 18 feet high. Near the center was near the center were found the bones of about a dozen men and women mixed with the bones of various animals. The skull in question was the only perfect one, and near it were found some abnormally large body bones. So there you go. That was our New York Times, 1882. More giant bones found in mounds, and they're always found in 
well not always, but they're so often found in mounds in the Americas. And uh, Graham Hancock's last book is actually on all the mounds all throughout the Americas and, you know, how, how a lot of them, well, he goes into how a lot of them have been destroyed. And like Walmart, yeah, right, Walmart is actually, I can't remember the number, but it's it's literally built, I think it's built three Walmarts literally on top of these ancient mounds and this is how they get rid of them right they just try and overlay their cube society on top of the old society uh, giant skeletons unearthed at athens thought to have been indians of gigantic proportions athens december 6 uh the skeletons of two indians have been unearthed along the banks along the banks of the hocking river at roaches mill one half mile east of athens why do they think that they that they are Indians? I wonder. The excavation was made under a large building a short distance from the bank of the river, unearthed a few feet from the skeletons were many arrowheads, which no doubt were buried with the redskins when they were sent either by accident or natural death to the happy hunting grounds. The skeletons were evidently those of gigantic men, judging by the bones they could not have measured less than seven feet in stature. The bones were in an excellent state of preservation, the teeth being still firmly embedded in the maxillary bones. Um, so is there an Athens in the US? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Because that would make sense, otherwise it, it has, makes no sense at all. They're obviously talking about um, you know, Native Americans, or American Indians, however we're supposed to uh, address them these days, because they, they call them redskins down here, uh, which is probably not a woke comment, but I am just reading an article, Facebook fact checkers. Um, oh, this one again, uh, why can't I make it bigger? Hang on, I'll do my shift key, I'll do the old trick and see if it works. No, nah, doesn't want to work, okay. Uh, giant bones in a mound. Scientists unearthed relics of Indian uh, of Indians who lived 700 years ago. Binghampton, July 18. Professor A. B. Skinner of the American Indian Museum. Blah 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 blah. Pennsylvania state historians who have been conducting research along the valley of the uh, Hanna have uncovered the Indian mounds at Tioga Point on the upper portions of the Queen's uh, the Queen's father's flats on what is known as the Murray Farm. Okay, uh, blah blah blah. In the mound uncovered were found the bones of 68 men which are believed to have been buried 700 years ago. The average height of those men was seven feet. While many were much taller, further evidence of their gigantic size was found in large, in large uh, collar or axes hewn from the stone. That's what they made. But there you go. Uh, 68 uh, uncovered from a mound. Seven foot tall. USA. Uh, beach giants uncovered, unearthed by WPA workers near Victoria. Uh, the San Antonio Express, so I'm guessing this isn't Victoria, Australia. Believed to be the largest ever found in the world. Uh, normal head also found. So there you go, giant skulls believed to be possibly the largest found in the world. The human skull shown on the right uh, was recently unearthed in Victoria County by Texas University anthropologists. This other, the other two are normal size. Okay, so this is the giant skull and these two are normal size human skulls. I mean, they could have taken the photo to, so we didn't have like the big one in the front, right, for perspective, right? They should have taken it front on. But anyway, it was the 1800s. Uh, some more amazing, you know, architecture and giant doors. Uh, so there you go. I mean, look at this stuff. And, I mean, what's it made from? Do you reckon this is... Uh, what is it? 
cement? Is it the ancient cement? Is it poured? Is it? I mean, I, I, I don't think we could reasonably say that that was carved. I mean, there's no way you could carve that. And look what happens at the top here. This bit <laughs> disappears beneath. So we haven't got the whole picture, but it dis disappears beneath all this stuff. And this one goes over the top. How bizarre. Uh, yeah, so what's this for, you reckon? Giant technology. What were they thinking with those big heads? Uh, this is just to show some artwork. And, you know, this has been pointed out before. Um, but look at the size of, you know, these paintings. Uh, this is, you know, these, these are people. Uh, even this one here. You know, there's a person in front. So that, that painting is basically as tall as that person. So that's a big painting. And so there's a couple there, but then look at these. These are just, you know, they're really giant size. And, you know, we're sort of told that, you know, people used to paint giant size, but I don't see it that much ever anymore. You know, maybe if, if they're entering, you know, a competition, a portrait competition, they might do a big painting or they might do a few, a couple, but they don't. Now, most of the paintings aren't this big. It's just not practical. Uh, this is the Vatican. And this is one of the giant buildings that obviously remains. These are people. This is a nun. And, I mean... <laughs> you know, what can you say? You know, if, if people believe that, that we, the humans of this size, built this then um, I think they're a bit, you know, cuckoo because, I mean, just so many questions, right? Why? How? Where did they get the materials? Where did they get the knowledge? You know, who designed them? Where was all the tech, all the, all the, you know, the tech that they would have needed to construct them? That's all left out of the story, right? No, 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 it just took a hundred years for the glory of God. And they just did it for the glory of God. Yeah, and this thing now there's a couple of these still left so this you can't see but this is the edge of a dome up here uh, so this is directly underneath the dome and of course on the floor as well you can kind of see the edge of the circle here you know, under the domes they've always got uh, you know the geometry basically uh, which looks very circuit board like now this I saw a video and they were talking about that on the top of these, you know, as, as like the, you know, strung inside like the ceiling, it's all made of silk. And they were talking about how it, it could be used as a diaphragm. Um, I can't remember everything, but yeah, I mean, this could be part of the tech. Couldn't it? And then, you know, this is wood. This is carved wood. I mean, <laughs> they would have needed, needed some fairly large sized trees to, to make this I mean and how you know if that's wood how did they carve that but that aside um, you know wise up and other channels talk about you know things being petrified and I've done a couple of videos myself there's a cave uh, in the UK and it's just it drips and it, the water's very high in minerals and people literally go and hang things there. And they turned to stone. It started off, uh, the little girl who lived nearby left a teddy bear there. And, and when they came back like a few weeks later, it was stone. A few weeks later. And so now people go and hang things there and lots of teddy bears and things and they turn to stone. Uh, so, you know, how long does it take? You know, this whole, and we do hear about petrified wood, you know, we, we know that it turns to stone. We're just told that it takes millions of years. But of course, you know, we love it. We know how they love to play with time, right? So, uh, yeah, is you know, something like this, if this was outside and it got flooded and turned to stone, you know, it, it looks pretty similar to a lot of things that we see, you know, outside in the landscape, doesn't it? Uh, pillars and things, you know, the statues. So who knows? More giant pictures. See? Little people, big pictures. And of course, <laughs> how tall is this roof? I mean, that's a person, right? What are we talking? One, two, three, four, 
No, five to there, then there's probably another two. So if she's five foot, that's another 25 feet. That's a 30 foot ceiling. Um, you know, why? Why make everything so big and grand when you don't have to? And, and again, you know, it's small populations, right? We're, and, and we're told, you know, there was no tech. Now this is a New York station. And again, this is a giant building. Look at this thing. I mean, these people, literally, they look like, maybe not ants, but they, they look like bugs, don't they? I mean, look at the size of these windows. <laughs> this is a person. It's just ridiculous. So, you know, who was building, you know, the buildings this size? Because look at this guy, right? I mean, this doorway here that, you know, they've probably closed in. Um, or maybe it's, so I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's massive. Just this bit, you know, just this bit, just this doorway is huge. You know, that's like two and a half, three times as tall as he is. But then look what's behind it. Look at these. I mean, they're, they're, you know, five times as big as this. Um, you know, so why? Why all this space? Of course, always, you know, curved arched roofs always based on acoustics and things like this but you know how big were the people that built this you know because this bit here this platform this could be a retrofit this whole platform because see it's it's literally just a platform so you can get through this door so i'm guessing that down here is underground level and this is ground level so these look i would say these are mud flooded windows and they've built this so that you can come through and get down to the, to the lower floor. Uh, because seriously, what other purpose does it serve, apart from the fact that they've put a couple of cafes there? Um, so, yeah, I don't know. What do you reckon? I mean, it is around here as well, but it's not actually, if you look at it, it's not at the same height. So they may have done this, like, oh, we'll just pretend it was part of this, but they didn't even get the, the height right. So yeah, the, I don't know, it'd be good to, to see if what's underneath these. But I suppose, I don't know, it looks like they've extended and there's something going out under the ground or maybe it went out, who knows. But whatever, that is a giant building. And again, you know, how big were the people who built that? Who who could have built that? Who, who would have built that? You know, were they this big or were they bigger? And this guy's quite... You know, famous. Uh, he's in quite a few pictures. Um, I believe he was the last of his you know, race, kind, whatever. Um, he was like a gentle giant dude. I've forgotten his name. Obviously, um, Asian. And that's the other thing. You know, we do get giants of all different. You know, I don't want to say races because they don't really exist. Um, but you know, all different. Uh, types of beings, you know, we get them, we get them black, white, yellow, brown, can I say that, <laughs> all colours of the rainbow, uh, this is uh, Armand Bronner, the giant of France, see this dude's a pretty big dude, and these are different as well, you know, this is different to like, you know, Robert Wald Waldo, Waldro, Waldo, uh, that guy, who was, a t a, you know, apparently the tallest person in the world, you know, ever, right? Uh, and he was only, you know, he might have been as tall as this guy. I'm not sure how tall he was. Pretty tall, like eight foot. Um, but he was really, really skinny. And he, he died young. By the time he was 20, he needed, he could hardly walk. He needed leg braces and canes. So he had a thyroid problem. Now, he wasn't supposed to grow that big. It wasn't natural. But this dude... Look at that. This is a big, strong dude. You wouldn't want to get in a fight with him. And again... Now look at this dude. And, and this guy does look like he's a short guy. But if he was a tall guy, he would only be up here. So, um, big dude. Looks, uh, you know, could be Tartari in that one. Ah, uh, there you go. All colours of the rainbow, whoops. Um, so I don't know when this was. Back in the 30s maybe. 
that chick's pretty tall. Um, has she got leg braces? I don't know. Her feet look a bit funny, but just the way she's standing. But I mean, she doesn't really look like a tall, skinny, you know, thyroid person. Ah, uh, so giants, giants everywhere. Uh, of course, you know, stories of, of them all through the past. More giant doors. Uh, this one has an arrow saying, unless you're this tall, you can't come in. Uh, this is great because you can see the door and this is human size that they've had to cut in, into the door. So it's just crazy. Uh, more giant doors. Yeah, look out at the size of the handle. <coughs> uh, which begs the question, when was that handle put on? You know, are we talking... You know, because how, how we've seen photos, you know, how, how, um, you know, how many giants were there around? How normal was it to see a giant back in 1900? Because you know, this looks like it could have been put on around that time. It doesn't look, you know, it's still a functioning door handle on the outside. And again, you know, the wood, the, the wooden stuff in these doors. I would have needed some big trees. Uh, <laughs> this guy's knocking. Let me in. Let me in. Uh, of course, a bit of gaslighting next to him. Uh, on each side, of course. So, you know, a couple of jobs acting as the twin poles. Uh, but look at the size of this door. That's, I mean, that's just... Uh, why? It's just completely impractical. Why would you spend the time and effort in having to open and shut something that big? Even if you, even if there was some reason they built the, the buildings this big, no need ever to build the doors that big. Just not. Nah. Again, they, you know, they cut their little doors into the big doors. And he's he's standing lower down here, so this is probably a mud flutter. Ah. Uh, Something I've mentioned a lot in my videos is symmetry. And look at that. And that's not that's not easy to do. That's not easy to design. It's not easy to build. I mean, that's perfect. I mean, that's perfect. You could get a ruler on that and the lines would just be perfect. And down to like this bit down the center. And what do we have at the end here? Not quite the, the fern from, but... You know, pretty close. And of course they love to cover up the path. Here, this guy's uh, found some... Well, I mean, this guy looks like he's, he's um, sort of stealing the past and selling it. Not very good, but yeah, look at the head on this guy. So um, well, clearly this would be uh, South America. That looks a bit Egyptian, doesn't it? But this looks very... Uh, you know, Mesoamerican, as they like to say. But yeah, these are, these are all cone heads. So there you go. They knew about them, you know, way back. But of course, uh, we're not supposed to know that, are we? This is Chinese Tartary, the Supreme Monarch. And look what's on his clothes. He's just got these same... Kind of curly bits everywhere. And I don't know why he's in my giant's file. Maybe because the dog's small. Oh, look at that. Alien, alien predator. Um, that's real, by the way. That's on a building. Uh, I think it's in Scotland, actually. Uh, don't take my word for it. But how's that? And this, this bit actually looks like it's, it's a bit of a plant or something, you know twisting around, not actually an eye, but I mean, look how tech that looks. This looks like an alien. Uh, and this is, you know, what's what's the deal with all these ghouly faces everywhere? And you'll notice with, you know, all these gargoyles and ghouls, most of them 
are our size. <laughs> oh my gosh. Here we go. This is someone to wish you sweet dreams at night. And of course, we've got the double merman feet. Um, just like that shop that I can't remember the name of. Is it Starbucks? Of course, they changed their symbol, I think, didn't they? Uh, here we go. Uh, this guy, look and see how he looks pretty skinny for his size. He's tall, but he's, he, 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 I would say he's, he's that big because of a thyroid problem. Now you can see he's got very skinny arms, no shoulders. He kind of goes in here. Get that, they sort of get that funny look like, like Akhenaten had. Maybe that was what was going on. Um, this guy was French, I believe, and as you can see, pretty big. Uh, there you go. Now this is you know, obviously a shot at the time. This was supposed to be the tallest man in the world and the shortest man in the world. And this is the same guy just sitting next to a normal sized guy. So you can see, and again, this guy is a real giant. He's not, you know, you can see he's completely different uh, sort of stature to that guy. See how he's all skinny, you know, he's just, he doesn't look right. Um, this guy does, he looks normal, and this guy is definitely, you know, he's a big dude. Jeez. And I wonder how old these people live to. You just don't hear anything of them. I wonder why that is. This guy looks similar, but I don't think it's the same guy. But this is a shot from, I think it's from World War Two, World War One maybe hat shop. And as you can see, these guys are all the same height, so you know they must be you know the average height, which you know I don't know five eight five ten is it? And this guy's pretty much almost twice their height. Obviously, he just got himself a nice hat. Uh, now these, these were found, these were dug out, uh, not out of a mound, I believe they were, you know, buried in a cave or something, I can't remember the full story, um, but there were more than these, there was, there was like 60 of them made, and, uh, sorry if you can hear the dog next door, he's barking at something, <laughs> uh, yeah, and these, obviously massive, right, who, who were they made for, like big battle axes or, I don't know, tree axes or something, uh, maybe that guy, what was his name? In the US, oh, this is uh, Father <laughs> Crespi, that's his name, Father Crespi. And uh, basically he was a priest in South America and he, you know, was very kind to all the all the natives and got on really well with them and they started, started to tell him stories about... Um, that there used to be an ancient civilization of giants and that they knew where all this treasure was and they actually started bringing these bits to him and he ended up with a big big collection of all these giant you know things like this crowns and things um and i believe when he died it all mysteriously disappeared uh you know which never heard that one before again you know <laughs> let me in What's the point? I mean, you know, are these what? Are these all supposed to have been put on by hand? Tiles? I mean, and who's cutting them? It's just madness. Again, I mean, and the doors, you know, what a giveaway, right? And this is the thing, you know, I mean, that, what's on that door? be interesting to yeah, get a better look at that it's not the best uh, contrast because I wonder if that's a facade something that's been added later on the outside of the door or if it's you know a story that that existed that's been you know changed because clearly it looks like it's got something to do with the Christian story just looking at it this looks like Jesus maybe being resurrected um, I don't know, it's just got that look. But then, 
You know, you come out to here, and what do we get? It's just all, you know, grapes and fruit and flowers and vines and then some lions at the top. Um, which, you know, do they have something to do with Christianity? Because they don't seem to. I don't know. Ah, uh, yep, another big one. Joseph Dussork from Berlin, German. And that's a, quite a beef eater he's got on his head there. That's, that's, I wonder if that's hiding something bigger, but, I mean, this guy might not be big, but this dude's huge. And again, he's, you know, he's a real giant. Uh, guns, I think this, I saw this in, maybe it was Martin's show, someone's video, not long ago, but these are, there's, there's a lot of these too. Um, they've actually given them a name, uh, and now people to actually try and make them. And yeah, these are called punt guns. Um, probably because when you pull the trigger, it backfires and kicks you for a punt. Um, a punt is, well, <laughs> is a type of kick in Aussie rules, if, if you don't know what that is. And, uh, of course, look at the size of this column, and do we have a mud flutter here? Nice half-sized door. Uh, more big women. And all these giants, they seem to be able to hold their arms out straight. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, you know, more from the past. Giants here. Um, beating the crap out of people. <laughs> That's not very nice. Walking over them and, well, I mean, who knows what this is, right? Look at this. We've got the horn symbolism here. Um, we've got things, you know, I don't know, are these representative of... Uh, look at the end of that. Is that... Is this representative of plasma and, and causing catastrophe, maybe? Uh, so of course, the bull horns uh, seem to be a symbol that was in the sky in the last uh, age. And samurai swords. I mean, what is, what's the use? Why would you build that? You couldn't even use it. Ridiculous. Unless you're a giant. More giants, so, um, you know, do we say Arabian? I mean, back in the time, I don't know if that's what they were called. Probably, you know, very close to Tartarian. Not sure what's on his chin there. Very well, and very, you know, look, look at the dress and what he's wearing. You know, these guys were always well dressed, the finest of everything. This guy's like, get your hand from over my head. I even put my top hat on. Come on, don't be a smart ass. And he's like, yeah, yeah, we giants, we can all hold our hands out. You've seen it before, you'll see it again. Uh, okay, this is called Personal Space Invaded. Space Invaded. Um, yeah, a couple of showgirls by the looks of it. Some some rather large showgirls. Feathers in their hair. Uh, this is that uh, Asian guy again. And, you know, like I said, he was quite famous. I, I think he ended up in Europe and they paraded him around a bit. And, you know, he was kind of, you know, it must have been a bit hard, you know, to be the last of your kind. You know, knowing everyone's just sort of using you and you just, I don't know. That must be a strange feeling. Oh, that one again. Oh, there we go. That's a different shot, but yeah, same thing. Central Station. Uh, here we go. So this guy here looks like the giant we just saw. And it looks like we've got giant Viking here and giant uh, tin soldier from the UK maybe. And of course, uh, much larger. And this guy's even pointing it out. Look how tall he is. I have to put my hand up to scratch his head. Uh, the giants. <laughs> and... I mean, this is the thing. I put this in because uh, with the Googles and, and, and with, you know, the Disneys and with, you know, the projects and the Mockingbirds, 
they what they tend to do is this they you know for giants if you put a search in for giants this is what you get you know you've got to then change you know your search to you know actual people that are tall you know and they do this with so many subjects that we look into um, and they do it with movies like El Dorado you do a search for El Dorado and go to pictures and you'll just get the Disney movie but of course El Dorado you know is, is the fabled city of gold and they do it with so many different topics so yes that's why that's in there and this guy is 25 and cool and so ward is a funny word, isn't it? The sword, the S word. Uh, some Arabians, pretty big. Nice turbans, of course, hiding their gigantic heads, maybe. This guy's got a big hat. And of course, you know, all these photos, these guys look pretty nice. You know, they don't look like the aggressive giants that we're told about. Uh, again, now you may have seen this one. This was a mummy that was uh, excavated, found. Uh, these guys apparently bought it and, you know, paraded it around in the sideshows for a couple of years. Um, then I believe it got put in formaldehyde or something in a tank and it may even still be around in, in some small museum, that one. But, I mean, look at the size of it. You know, and so this, you know, and of course, you know, with this, everyone tries to say it's fake, it's fake, it's fake, it's fake. How do you know it's fake? And there's, there's more chance that it's not fake because who would... I mean, sure, they had money to make, but, you know, it's hard to make something that looks real and that looks real for years. Oh, that's the, the, that's the people who are trying to get us to move over to their way of thinking at the moment. But also, the trident, right? This is a sign associated with Mr. Red and also with, you know, Zeus and other gods and, of course... Uh, it's also the shape that is created by a plasma, uh, by plasma while it's, when it's gaining charge and building charge. And, uh, so, I don't know, does the devil wreak havoc and explode with fire? What do you think? Uh, I mean, come on, this is the world's fair, obviously. Uh, this is, you know, again, th these are the, the types of building that are just, ridiculously oversized and most of these got knocked over you know they you know, rebranded them for a bit did their world's fairs look how cool we are look how awesome we are and then they smashed them all and some of these buildings they had a lot of trouble uh, demolishing them but i mean why would you I mean, look at this but but again who, you know who would build this how big were the people that built that uh, okay this is that picture uh, i've showed this before this this is Orange Man, and there was this guy, yeah, that was walking behind him, and someone sort of done the heights and the perspectives and things, and he does seem to look a bit tall. Uh, you can't really see there. You can see how they've done their perspective lines, so that's kind of this guy's height and this guy's height, and, and they're showing this guy's height, so from there to here, it hasn't, you know, got that much bigger so from this guy to this guy if there was any rise it would not be that much so he looks rather large John Hugo this is the guy we saw the photo of before and of course a lot, a lot of these people were sort of in the end they were kind of relegated to freak shows and things to make their living this just yeah this is uh, South America of course we have the Patagonian Giants down there have the Spanish and they look uh, decidedly smaller than all these women and here are the men. Boy, what are you doing checking out our chicks? Uh, so giants, lots of, you know, this is the thing. Uh, and we have things like Homo Capensis, uh, the giant architecture, um, you know, giant trees, of course. I don't have many pictures there, but, um, you know, things like this. These are just the redwoods, but, you know, these are what were being cut down all over America. As soon as they got there, right? As soon as they got there, they started to, to destroy it all. There you go, someone's living in a tree. Uh, again, you know, so tons of photos, guys, tons of photos. Look at this one. Men and women, all different, you know, colours. You know, from all different places. 
So they seem to be widespread. So um, I've been going a while, so I, I was going to show a bit more, but I might do a part two. So yeah, just that was just basically a look through my Giants folder. Well, not even through it. Uh, there's quite a bit that we didn't see, but you'll see I've actually... Uh, these are from videos I've made. So there was... Um, part two was Albion, part three, Egypt. Part 4, Homo Capensis. So they're all in Autodidactic 1, uh, back about a year ago, if you want to check them out. So I hope you enjoyed that one, guys. Thanks for spending some time with me. Have a spectacular day, and I'll talk to you all on the next upload. Bye for now. Hi guys, how are you going? It's Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel, and as always, Autodidactic means to be self-educated guys and you want to be self-educated because believe me you do not want to know what these guys are trying to teach us. So this video is going to be uh, Giants, the Giants from the Earth Part 2 and this one's going to be focusing on uh, the UK which used to be called, <clears throat> excuse me, which used to be called Albion or at least uh, England did. So yep, let's get into it. Okay guys, so here we go. So this is just the uh, Wikipedia page for Albion and as you can see Albion is the oldest known name for the island of Great Britain. Um, today it's still sometimes used poetically, blah blah blah. And if we come down here you'll see the giants of Albion. A legend exists in various forms that giants were either the original inhabitants or the founders of the land named Albion. Um, then it gets into um, how Brutus, who was a Trojan, um, first came there and defeated uh, the Giants and a bit more down there it also says up here that Albion um, may be after the White Cliffs of Dope so it might mean white um, there's a there up here somewhere but as you can see, the White Cliffs of Dover may have given rise to the name Albion and just as a side note um, it was after someone also another uh, <laughs> another angled as to uh, how they got the name. <laughs> Sorry, my brain's not working. Um, was after a giant called Albina who was Greek. Um, but yeah, it just struck me white because of over white Albina Albino Anglo Albino white. I don't know <laughs> things rolling around in my head. All right, so. Here we go. This is Gog Magog and the Giants of Albion. And yes, that's Gog Magog. So obviously there's uh, links to the Bible where we have um, Gog and Magog, um, who was a giant in the land of Magog. But uh, as you see here, after Brutus and the Trojans arrived, they explored the island and found it very much to their liking. Individually, the giants were much bigger and for the most part stronger than, than the Trojans. Only corn... Uh, only Corinius, one of the Trojan captains, could match them. However, there were only 24 of them and they could not match the Tro Trojan weaponry, armor, and numbers. So only 24 giants. Um, and the Trojans battled the giants seeking to claim Albion as their own. So um, I'm not sure of the actual um, ties between the Trojans and the Phoenicians. Uh, I've, I've had a bit of a look into it. I need to sort of look a bit more, but Brutus of Troy, he, you know, after Troy was defeated, um, he, he sort of went out and then he uh, ended up killing his dad by accident, a hunting accident, and got kicked out. And then, um, yeah, the goddess, um, I think it was Diana, came. Yeah, the goddess Diana appeared to him in a dream and told him about the island. So one day Brutus decided to hold a festival of Thanksgiving to the gods. During the festival, with many games and events underway, Gog Magog and the Giants launched an attack hoping to take the Trojans by surprise. Although the Giants at first had the upper hand, killing many, Brutus rallied his men and the Battle of the Giants, except the 
uh, in the battle in the battle of the giants except their lady Gog Magog were killed he was spared by Brutus specifically to fight uh, Corinius who defeated him with Albion now free of giants Brutus shared out of the land uh, shared out the land among his captains and followers as he saw fit and obviously Brutus that word the name that's where we get you know words like brute strength and brutal and this kind of stuff um, although Gog Magog was killed he was uh, to return centuries later during the Norman conquest of Britain by King William the Conqueror. Um, this is just so it's talking about the legends and how it's sort of uh, the legends of Brutus and the Giants, uh, Brutus of Troy. Um, so according to British legend, Gog Magog was the last survivor of a mythical race of giants that ruled the island of Albion before the arrival of Brutus of Troy. Um, so it was written down in the 1100s. Um, Troy fell, uh, I've got that up here, I think it was um, BC, well, different days, but around 1200 BC. So that was um, when he got there, when it was quite early. Then later on, uh, we have Caesar. Now, this is uh, Giants in the UK. This is just a bit about um, an Irish giant, um, blah, 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 and how they, they were fighting over the body so they could uh, cut it up and study it, basically. Caesar's triumph over the giants. Marius triumphs at Aqua Sextiae and on the plain of Versailles. Uh, is that how I say that? Proved a turning point in Rome's centuries old struggle against the Celtic giants. So again, and these are called Celtic giants. Um, you know, obviously the, the Celts came from uh, the UK, probably Albion, so the same race I think we're talking about here. Um, before this, they had seemed virtually unbeatable and the widely held conception of them as superhuman, plus the fear that their skulls might end up on some Celtic warriors. Trophy shelf caused many a Roman soldier to break out in goosebumps. But after Marius vanquished their biggest and their best, the mantle of invincibility fell from the Celts and to the Romans. Some Gauls were uh, times of change, blah, blah, blah. And then it just sort of talks about, I'll leave a link to, to all these um, pages if you want to read it. It just talks about how then basically the Romans um, just, yeah, went to Gaul. They um, defeated the giants and then just uh, basically proceeded to take over the area and subjugate all the people. Um, the plea from Rome's military help only hastened their downfall. They opened the door to Caesar's subjugation of Gaul and his massacres of the great numbers of people. So, you know, th this is what was going on. These were guys were going around killing people. They were killing out the race of giants. Um, so this is back in Caesar's time. This is, yeah, uh, 71 BC, so just before the, the year zero. Um, as we come down here, uh, it also says, blah, 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 here it is here, sorry. Um, so in 55 BC, Caesar took time out from his Gaelic War. <laughs> it is a great Britain, isn't that nice? Uh, the first voyage matched to no more than a reconnaissance to see if, uh, to see in the proconsul's own words, what sort of people live there and to get some idea of the terrain and the harbours and the landing places for his later invasion. So these guys in boats going around the world just invading and killing everyone. Uh, sound familiar? After putting ashore, Caesar and his party came upon men who, according to Strabo, were taller than the Kelty or the Celts and not so yellow haired. Although their bodies are of a looser build, the towering Belgae, who originally hailed from that part of Gaul located just south of the modern Belgium now controlled much of the great island. Okay, so they've turned up again, at, it sounds like Albion, it might be a different island. I want to think it's in Albion, England. Uh, and there's giants there again. Now this is a thousand years after um, Brutus. So no one seems to know where they first crossed the English Channel, but as Caesar later learned, they came ashore as raiders while roaming the island. However, the giants saw it as a pleasant place to live, and after plundering there, the natives, they decided to settle there. 
able on account of their size and strength to do much as they please. They chose for themselves the coastal areas and became farmers, uh, the Aborigines or the native inhabitants. Upon being disposed of the choicest lands, retreated to the interior. And by the time the Romans had landed on England's shores, note Caesar, the population of these robbers turned farmers had grown extremely large. But his quick exploratory trip, uh, the proconsul caught them unprepared, easily put down what resistance they put up. They returned to Gaul to deal with yet another Celtic uprising there. So the Celtics are saying in this were the giants. I mean, it's just said it about three or four times. Um, and then it just goes, you know, this is all about, now this is probably not Julius Caesar. They were all called Caesars back then. Um, they run around <laughs> seizing things, right? Uh, blah, blah, blah. So this is all about the battles they fought them on the bench. But yeah, so I'll, I'll leave the link so you can read through this, but definitely more giants, you know, Celtics, they're calling them. Uh, in Albion, so we've had them there in the 1200 BC, and now that was uh, like 67 BC, I think it was. Now here's another one. This is um, Irish, the the Tuatha de Danann. This was a race of Celtic giants, <laughs> and the father gods who were believed to be the ancestors of the Irish Celts. They were said to dwell in the underground kingdoms or inside hollow mountains. One of the chief deities was Lugus, a name that translates to the Shining One. Okay, ring any bells? The Shining Ones. Revealing a parallel connection to Sumer's deified giant kings known as the Ari or the Anunnaki or the Anunnaki, who were also called the Shining Ones. Okay, now we've all seen the artwork, the uh, reliefs and petroglyphs from the Sumerians, um, and they definitely have giants in them. Um, Kukul, Kukul Lane, he is known as the Irish Hercules and he's said to have come to Ireland in a special ship when his homeland was destroyed by a great flood. It is interesting that his name sounds very familiar, uh, very sorry, similar to the South American white god of Kukul Khan. That's Kukul Lane, a character described as a bearded white man and of very tall stature with deep set blue eyes. He was also said to have arrived on a boat telling a tale about his escape from his sunken island homeland. Okay, now, um, you know, also um, Atlantis. Um, obviously, there's legends of Atlantis sinking. Um, that goes back to about 11,900 years ago, if I've got that correct. Um, and basically, um, Atlantis has been found. We know where it is. It's in the Atlantic Ocean. Basically, um, it is where um, it was told to us it would be. And I'm just trying to remember the islands. I think they're called the, the Azores, the Azore Islands. I'm pretty sure that's right. Uh, so I'm, I'll have to do a bit of a video on that as well. But um, yeah, with Google Earth and stuff, when you can sort of look at the topography under the ocean, um, yeah, so that's where Atlantis is. So this guy um, may have come, you know, from his sunken island homeland. It's not that far from uh, Albion or the UK. Uh, the Simbri, these were giants living in Celtic Gaul. Now that's uh, France. They had long manes of blonde and red hair and a fierce warlike demeanor. Red hair, okay all of which led them to be compared to lions. Now, I find that interesting seeing as now in the UK, there's lions everywhere on the symbols, you know, that, that's the symbol of, of Great Britain, isn't it, the lion? And not that there's ever been that we know lions in Great Britain, so interesting. They were also known as the Cimmerians, very similar to Sumerian, right? which may be suggestive of a Sumerian connection. The legend led in modern times to the inspiration for the story of Conan the Sumerian, the fierce warrior of the northern land of Hyperborea. Okay, if you don't know what Hyperborea is, uh, that's the land up on the North Pole, four big continents. Um, Albion was recorded to have been one of the Titan Albion, he was recorded to have been one of the Titan giants fathered by Poseidon. According to legend, he came to England after the flood and was for many years the island's principal deity. 
In ancient times, England was actually called Albion after their titan god king. Many British place names retain the word Albion or Albany to this day. So as you can see, there's lots of different theories as to how uh, why it was called Albion. There was a king, you know, there's white from the white cliffs of Dover, which is probably wrong. Um, there was another, um, Al Albain, I think her name was, uh, who was a giant from Greece. So I'd say that, yeah, the, it's got something to do with giants, not, not necessarily the White Cliffs of Dover, that was probably just made up. Um, King Arthur, there is some Arthur, Arthur <laughs> excuse me, there is some of Arthurian law uh, which claims that he piloted an ark during the deluge. This legend also relates to uh, that he stood just over nine feet tall. Inspired by stories that Arthur was buried in Glastonbury, King Henry II dispatched a crew to excavate the area. They found a lead cross at a depth of nine feet inscribed with the words, Here lies the body of King Arthur. They dug further below the cross to a depth of 16 feet and found a stone sarcophagus containing the bones of a man nine feet tall. History records the bones at Glastonbury, which were supposed to have been those of Arthur. Um, and it keeps going. So there's quite a bit on this page. Like I said, I'll leave these links. Uh, the Tritons, this is a race of giant gods spawned by the interbreeding of Poseidon with a mortal woman named Cleito. Now again, guys, listen to that story. Interbreeding of Poseidon, a god with a mortal woman. Okay, Watchers, Book of Enoch. Uh, they were recorded to have been the royal family of Atlantis. Again, and some are said to have escaped the flood that destroyed Atlantis. Titans were great race of giants born to Uranus and Gaia. So, I mean, and we've got Atlas, you know, obviously Atlantis, Atlas, King of Atlantis. So there's, there's quite a lot down here. Cyclops, Iberius, uh, Titan and brother of Albion. You know, so um, look at this. It's a bit much to go into right now, but I will go into in more depth later. Um, but yeah, interesting article, uh, interesting uh, website, that one. Okay, and this is the Tuatha of Danan, the apples of immortality. Apples, right? Apple a day keeps the doctor away, but also the apple the tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil. So there's many, many ties, guys, to all these ancient stories. Um, and, you know, with uh, Anatoly Fomenko's work, um, Alternative Chronology, he moves dates around like the, um, with his research, you know, he's saying that the Trojan War was was not 1200 BC or before that it was more like sort of, you know, 200, 100 BC. Um, so all these things, all these stories look like they've been mixed up and mashed together. Um, it could just be one story or you know, just a few that have been split out and tried to be made into more than they actually are. Um, so again, who were the Tuatha Dé Ain? The Tuatha Dé Danann <clears throat> uh, brought fascinating skills and wisdom to Ireland when they arrived there. Again, that sounds like the watchers who taught the skills. <clears throat> um, they gained those skills from four wise men who resided in the four cities. One in each, Sinaias was a wise man who ruled Murius, Marias, blah, 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 different cities there. Uh, this is in Ireland. Treasures that were beneficial to Ireland. Later we will discuss the four treasures in each detail. Mysterious origin. It remains ambiguous how the Tuatha de Danann arrived in Ireland. Some sources claim that those people arrived through flying in the air and landing air. While travelling in the air, they were in the form of mist or fog. Okay, so what were they moving? Were they hiding themselves, disguising themselves from all these people who were trying to kill them and wipe them out? Other sources claim they arrived on dark clouds, later escorted people to believe that they came from heaven rather than from the earth. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Surprisingly, people profess that the race were actually aliens. Um, the only rational opinion regarding how they reached were, of course, was they had to come from boats and it states that the smoke or fog was actually the evidence where their ships burned. But it, that doesn't make sense because it said that they, they reached Ireland. So while their ships have burned while they were travelling there, um, that's just more mainstream madness. 
But yeah, so just a bit about them. They're all shrouded in mystery. Um, <clears throat> same story. They've come from, you know, escaping a flood and a deluge, and they're uh, looked on as gods. They've got all these sort of skills that they can teach, uh, and it looks like they do. Um, now, this is Jack the Giant Killer. Um, so according, according to the folklorist Joseph Jacobs in the English fairy tale, Jack the Giant Killer, uh, Jack kills a giant called Cormoran who measures 18 feet tall and has a waist circumference of 9 feet. He was also said to have six digits on each hand and foot. And again, this is in what's now the UK or Albion. Uh, now, Jack the Giant Killer, this was back around the time of King Arthur, which um, basically was prehistory. So, I mean, and with the dates the way they are, I don't know, you know, it was a while ago. His home was a cave on St. Michael's Mount where he walked across the mainland. Uh, this is just how the giant basically built an island. And Jack the Giant Killer, um, he took up the challenge to go and kill him because this guy, this giant was um, harassing people. So Jack went out, dug a hole, he fell and hit him in the head with a pitchfork or a pickaxe. And then he went on to kill lots more giants. Um, Jack then collects Cormoran's treasure, as was agreed with the grateful counsellors. So that's where Jack and the beanstalk comes from. You know, he killed him and collects the treasure, the golden eggs. Uh, the people with delight was Jack ridding of them of Cormoran and gave him a belt <clears throat> with the following inscription written upon it. He is the right valiant Cornishman who slew the giant Cormoran. Cormoran was the first giant Jack killed and was uh, to set him on his way to becoming the famous giant killer of folklore. Okay, and then just a bit about King Arthur again. Um, we've read before they excavated his grave, so upon excavating, uh, the searchers unearthed a massive oak trunk buried 16 feet deep, just as Henry had described. Inside was a human skeleton, which confirmed that they had discovered something special. It was absolutely gigantic. It appeared to be much taller than an average man, and the space between the eye sockets was as wide as the palm of a man's hand. Apparently this famous king was truly larger than life, and that's uh, King Arthur, King Arthur's grave. So King Arthur looks like he was a giant too, um, and King Arthur, um, blah, 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 let me copy. The legend of King Arthur is enduring. Uh, the earliest accounts are simple, a heroic king rescues his country. Okay, the story evolved over the centuries and further elements as Camelot, Round Table, Merlin, etc. were put in there. Um, blah, blah, blah. But basically what the story is um, for King Arthur is that he um, yeah, saved his country. He pushed out the invaders. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, got rid of the invaders who were invading his country or what would have been Albion. So if you look at the information we've just gone over, the, the only people invading it were, were you know, um, like the Trojans with Brutus and then the Romans. So that would make him a giant. It would make King Arthur a giant defending his people who were giants against the invaders who were the, you know, Romans and Trojans and... Probably Phoenicians is what they were. So a bit of information there. I do have a couple of pics to have a look at. Uh, here we go. This is um, a picture. This is depicting Albion. As you can see, this is supposed to be Brutus and his men rocking up on their little boat um, and some the women they've brought. And here we have two giants. Now these ones are at least dressed well um, because you, as you'll see, most of these giant pictures they try and make them look like they're you know um savages basically barbarians um stupid but they obviously weren't because if you look at the architecture around the world uh, a lot of it was built for big people uh this is andre the giant well we all heard of andre the giant let's look at the size of him now um he was like almost nine feet, he was eight, eight something. Uh, so he was a big dude. So he, this is what most of the giants, that's what they're talking about, the sizes are sort of eight to 10 feet. Sometimes they go up to 12, but you know, 
in, in these sort of recent stories, this is what we're hearing about as a size. So he would be, you know, a giant, but he wouldn't be a big giant. He'd just be an, an average giant of, you know, what the stories are talking about. Still a big dude. Uh, here's a couple of giants. Now, I just found this interesting because uh, this is from France. These two are giants, but this is actually their siblings. This is one family, seven children, two of them, you know, huge anatomically correct giants, you know, nine footers, and five siblings that are just standard size. So um, it looks like, you know, the, 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 the DNA, the genes are still in there to come out, and, and they do as we see, you know, we see wrestlers and basketball players and things. Um, and we have the stories of, you know, giants, interbreeding with you know what what they're calling mortals or you know basically our sized people and that's how the genes got into our gene pool i'm guessing um that's if you know that's if we were if we're different races but i mean we're different you know species whatever um but they it could just be a gene that um help you know sort of stops does or lets us grow bigger because we have genes in our body at the moment that um, stop us growing at a certain point and when people keep growing uh, they don't have that blocker they actually get big problems um, you know they grow too big they get too heavy for their legs and knees and hips and things um, but these guys look like they're anatomically correct so they look like they've just got a gene that lets them get bigger this is Brutus uh, the Trojan, who slayed the giants, and just interesting helmet. Look at all the, you know, the, the flowery sort of things that you, it's the same as you see all over the buildings around the top of columns and stuff. <coughs> Excuse me, so I just found that interesting. Of course, this is still back when we were using V's instead of U's. Now, <laughs> The Giants of Albion, you know, when I did a search, I think it's an extra which I showed, but yeah, this is what, what the Giants of Albion has been reduced to, just Warhammer, you know, video games. And as you can see, as I was saying, they always depict them as stupid, as savage sort of barbarians, um, the dogs of war for hire, regiment of renown. <laughs> Um, this is uh, this is a picture of a giant, and this is supposed to be Merlin, and these are the giants helping him build Stonehenge. That's from around the 1300s, they say. That state of that picture, so the 300s probably. Uh, yeah, so this is when I did a search for giants, uh, as you can see, Albion giants on any images, and this is what you get: a Warhammer, Warhammer, Warhammer. Warhammer, Warhammer, Citadel Ancient. I mean, there's a few, you know, Old Testament and Total Warhammer. <laughs> so this is how they cover things up. Um, I showed this uh, in another video I did. Um, what was I searching for? I can't even remember now. Um, but yeah, you get this all the time. Now, when you're looking for sort of specifics of history, hit stuff that, they, that they're trying to cover up and they don't want you seeing, um, they just bring out all this other stuff. So when you look for it, you just get swamped with crap. Uh, here's just another picture. This is again uh, the Trojans of Brutus coming ashore, and these are the giants on Albion uh, defending themselves. And as you can see here, at least they're well dressed. They're dressed, you know, uh, sort of that medi medieval style we see everywhere with their all got their big hats on, of course, because they've got big scarves, right? History of Jack the Giant Killer. So there we go. That's the original sort of story. Again from uh, Great Britain, Albion. Here's an old map. I just found this interesting. Because, um, you know, in all these stories, they never really tell us. They just say, oh, they went ashore and there was giants. They never mention, you know, that it was covered in castles. Look at them all. It's covered in castles. This is an old map of Albion. Uh, that'll be Ireland again, covered in 
you know, covered in castles. And this is another thing for all these old books. We just sort of, we told us a long time ago, so we get this image in our head of it's, you know, no technology and backwards, no buildings, no mud huts kind of thing. But in reality, it probably looked much, well, actually much better than it does today because of the architecture that they still have. But these places were completely built out um, by giants. Here's another old map. Just of um, Albion. Of course, this is all written in, I'm not sure, is that Latin? Greek, I'm not sure, probably not Greek, I don't think. But again, you know, look at this huge castle, and there's castles and big stone buildings everywhere. So, giants in Albion, which was the UK, or which is the UK, guys. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of historical evidence that, that talks about there being giants uh, not only in the UK, uh, in, in Albion, but also, and, and Ireland, but also in Gaul, in France. Um, and they seem to be linked back to Samaria, where we obviously have other uh, giants. Um, King Arthur was buried in a, a stone sarcophagus, they said. Um, the same as Egypt, obviously Egypt, a lot of evidence of giants there as well. Um, so yeah, this is part two on Did Giants Walk the Earth? So I hope you've enjoyed that. Please leave me a comment, uh, subscribe and like and share. If you like this content, please share it around. Um, and as always, guys, stay autodidactic because self-education is the way forward. Thank you for watching. Have an amazing day and I'll catch you on the next upload. Bye for now. Hi guys, how are you going? It's Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel and as always, Autodidactic means to be self-educated and guys, you want to be self-educated because believe me, you don't want to know what they are trying to teach us. Now, this is a, a video, this is part three in my giant series, uh, Did Giants Walk the Earth? And this uh, video is going to be focusing on Egypt. As you can see in this picture, we've just got some uh, sarcophagi or, you know, um, uh, coffins. <laughs> well, they use as coffins and you can just see the size of these things. Huge. Um, so we're going to be getting into giants in Egypt, a uh, bit of tech, a bit of weird scullery as well. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay guys, so here we are in Egypt and just to start with uh, a couple of statues uh, These are called the Colossi of, uh, at Mendes, I'm pretty sure it is um, And again, you can see the size of these people, you know compared to these statues, but Also check out the condition of these statues um, You know, they look like they've had a bit of a hammering um, You can actually see this one. It looks like you can see the construction and it's been made out of in, like, blocks um, that have been, you know, put together somehow and then carved rather than one solid piece of rock. I'm not sure, but that's what it looks like. As you can see, the faces are completely gone. Um, and this is going to be a recurring theme uh, in Egypt is this whole place has just been devastated by something. Um, I'd say it definitely was flooded, um, but it also looks like, uh, yeah, various people have come along and just blown the crap out of it. Uh, on purpose um, and you know when you see the size and the scope of this place you'll sort of understand why you know when they're trying to um, you know keep us ignorant and suppress suppress the true knowledge of the past okay so this is um, a front on view this is the daughter of uh, Nefertiti and Akhenaten 
not sure what her name is. Um, this is a skull of Akhenaten. And as you can see, got quite a big noggin there. Uh, this is his wife Nefertiti. These are two sculptures. Now Akhenaten was the first one who, uh, who basically who um, turned the Egyptian religion into monotheism, so from multiple gods to one god. And he also, um, as far as art and depictions, he he started getting things depicted um, as they really were. Uh, before him, it was a lot more stylized, and especially with you know the pharaohs and that, it was all sort of they were painted, um, you know, to be represented as god and godlike figures. Um, so yeah, this is his wife, and as you see, good sized head there. This is Tutankhamun, which is their son. Uh, this is an x-ray they did of it, and again you can see the size of his head. Um, now that is Tutankhamun's sister, that's one that we saw the front one before. And you can see, and that's, you know, it's a, you know, look at the detail here, that, that, that looks like a, you know, proper depiction. I mean, and if it's not, why would they make their heads bigger? That seems like a strange thing to do if it wasn't real. Um, this is just another statue. You'll see these statues everywhere. They've all got these big long hats on. What are they hiding? There's another one front on. Uh, the snake, which we're told represents um, like the third eye or the Kundalini or something, but who knows? It, it might be a representation of you know some kind of energy. These guys may have been the ones who were keeping the energy and, and the, the power, like the power literally uh, here's another one this would be a male again I'm not sure who this is but you can see this is how they used to wear their hair the young males uh, they just shave it and leave one sort of side ponytail thing braid and this is Akhenaten and you can see he's a fairly strange looking figure um, this is just a superimposed um, elongated skull from Paracas in South America that's been put there just to show you that it could fit quite well. I mean, look at the height of that. And uh, this is Akhenaten's uh, torso. So like I said, he's a pretty weird looking guy. He's got, you know, very sort of feminine hips here. Um, not very big, pretty long, big head, skinny neck. So he's a bit of a weird looking guy, big head. And when he um, finished his reign, they basically all the um, people in Egypt, all the people in Egypt, uh, went around and smashed all the figures of him and all the statues and everything. So you can see this one's had a go. So there's a few remaining, but yeah, most of his stuff was broken and he's you know painted over. Okay, so giants. So I just wanted to show you those skulls, guys, um, because I think there's a relation between big skulls and Giants, um, in my last episode, part two of the Giants, Did They Walk the Earth, um, there was quite a bit coming up about the size of these guys' heads. Um, they didn't talk about the shape, but they were saying they were large heads, they were massive heads. Um, yeah, so the heads, I think, are tied in um, to this whole giant thing. As you can see here, as it says, five to six metre tall giant king, ancient Egypt. And yeah, these guys are pretty small, don't even come up to his knees. Uh, here's another one. Guy's obviously a lot taller. He's got one of these hats on. And yeah, big guy, right? So why would they be depicting this? I mean, a lot of people say, well, these were royalty, so they had to be depicted bigger, but I don't think so. And that's not that's nothing that we've we've seen in recent history, you know, in any way really, apart from, you know, the the ancient cultures where they look like they were actually giants, you know, like Egypt and Sumeria, places like these. But yeah, here you go, two normal sized people. Not sure what they're carrying here either. They look like some kind of energy device, maybe, tech some kind of antiqua tech. Uh, here's another one. As you can see, large ladies and then a short lady down here. With this one too, um, 
you can see that she's got a flattened off head. They've got flattened off heads, but they've got these, I don't know, are they feathers maybe? I'm not sure if it's some kind of stylizing to say they have actually got big heads or if it's just a feather in their cap, I'm not sure. Um, so yeah. What else do we have here? Okay, this is when we looked at at the start and you can see the size of these, you know, coffins or sarcophagi. Um, you know, you wouldn't make the at that big if the person was, you know, this tall, would you? Uh, this was an interesting shot. This is um, an old shot um, from the wall of a temple somewhere in Egypt and someone's, uh, this is what's left of this statue and this is them building it and someone's sort of worked out that this is about the height of about that line. You can see it's left the top off there. That should be, if this guy stands up, would be about his height. And this is actually the height of a human today. So you can see it's about half the size. So I found that interesting too. And these are the little guys too, because as you can see, there's a big giant dude sitting down here. But that's the statue, of course. But yeah. Again, and this giant does have a big head, elongated skull. And we've got the, the, the small peasant type people. Looks like they're, I don't know, adoring him or they're asking, you know, for something. Uh, but these pictures are everywhere, all over Egypt. They are not hard to find. And here's another one of a seated giant standing at a small, normal sized human or big human. Here's another one the short humans and the giants. Okay, so um, the great. Pyramid and all the great the pyramids of Giza um, are in the same const the same configuration as the constellation of Orion. I'm sure you've probably all heard that before, but I find that interesting. Um, also, the the pyramids in Tiwanaku do the same, and I'm sure there's others around the world. Um, these obviously are the pyramids, and I mean, look at the state of these three out the front. Um, this, they're just being devastated by something. Um, you know, they all they all, all look partially buried. Everything looks partially buried out here, and of course, these things are massive, massive. Um, I don't think you needed giants to build these, um, but they definitely may have been built by giants. This is some technology, and again, we see a giant here holding the technology, and the normal-sized humans down here. Uh, now this could be a filament for a light bulb represented as a snake. Everything's sort of stylized. Uh, if you have a look at the next one, this is another. This is I found interesting. It's all stylized, but it looks like some kind of machine. We've got this zappy bit here, um, and that looks like I don't know energy or something or wires coming out of the top here. Um, now this one is the same as the picture before. It's just a bigger shot. And you can see this looks like some kind of capacitor or something. And there's even a wire that comes from this machine here, whatever it is, comes around the back. And this connection is stylized into what looks like a lotus, which is obviously a big symbol in Egypt. Um, so this is mm, all sort of tying in. The, this is sort of they're trying to explain something, but we're obviously not getting it or we haven't been allowed to focus on it probably but this definitely looks like antiquitech not sure why these guys are sitting under it but interesting shot uh, again whoops this is the same uh, you can see there looks like a lotus flower with a snake coming out of it and this one here you can see yeah there's little sort of i don't know capacitors or something attached to them Okay, here's a statue. This is Ramses II. Huge statue, and as you can see, it looks like there's a that's a you know a human, it's not a child, and they're pretty small, come up to his knees. So it looks like the further back you go in into into the past, it looks like the bigger the giants got. Um this is uh oh, I'm pretty sure it's Luxa. Uh, yeah, 
or is it Thebes? I can't remember, sorry. But again, um, you can see the size of these people compared to the size of these buildings. They're just massive and all the way down. And obviously you can see again, it's just all been devastated, broken stuff everywhere. No, oh, lot of you know, there's heads missing off these uh, statues at the side. And there's just so many statues everywhere. And it's the same sort of classic, you know, it's, it's architecture we see everywhere. There's pillars everywhere. They're just bigger. <laughs> and the statues everywhere, they're just bigger. But we see this kind of stuff throughout all the sort of, you know, Tartarian kind of architecture. Here's obviously a um, massive spire. <laughs> Gosh, I've lost, I've lost the name at the moment. Um, my brain's not working. Um, yes, I'll come back to that when I remember where my brain is. Um, okay, um, obelisk, obelisk, <laughs> obelisk, and of course covered in hieroglyphs too. Is that something to do with power? You know, was this some kind of receiving station for power that was given out somehow? Who knows? This is um, just like a, a layout of the um, Giza Plateau. You know, got the pyramids here and all this sort of stuff, all these infrastructure around them. And it's just interesting because it looks a bit like a circuit board. And if you look at it, you know, if this would be like a one of the pyramids and all this sort of stuff that's around it, you know, capacitors and resistors and all that kind of stuff, you know. As you can see in this shot, there's just all this stuff in the ground, you know, all different shapes, different doing different things. So, oops, see that? I don't know. What do you reckon? So, you know, this could be a whole sort of circuit board power plant kind of thing, you know, that we know they built on big scales, but maybe they built on really big scales. I mean, you know, build it, you know, to last, you know, why not? So I found that interesting as well. So we've got, you know, giants, we've got giants with elongated skulls. Here's another one with a big head. This is Rams, he's the second as well. Um, and we've got Antiquitec, um, you know, and here again, they've all got this... Um, you know, snake, serpent, I think it's a cobra. And as we saw in those light bulb type things, the electricity was um, represented by a snake. So what does this mean? Does, does this literally mean, you know, they are in control because they have the power? You know, that's how we use the word today, right? Power, if you've got the power, you've got power over people, but power is electricity, power. Um, but also just look at the carving. The, the perfection in this carving, if it's carving at all. Because with the amount of statues all over the place in Egypt, I mean, you know, you can imagine if you got all this done and you just chip that nose, one wrong stroke, and you've got to start again, you know, because they're all perfect. So I'm not, I don't really believe that they were carved by hand. Here's the same statue. You can see how big it is. It's been knocked over. I don't think this one was ever finished and erected because you can see here, this leg hasn't been finished. It looked like it was broken during the, the building process. Um, but look at this his skirt there. Look at that work. And it's all taken out underneath, you know what, by hand. And they haven't chipped one little corner. I mean, this is the thing. This stuff looks more and more like it's been printed. And as you can see, this is just to show you how perfect the work is. Um, this has all been measured out and it's all exact side to side, it's a mirror image of itself. You know, so if they're mirror, mirror images, are they even of real people or is this like something to to do with, you know, sacred geometry and Fibonacci and some kind of perfection? As you see here, this is from Philip Dunn. He's done a lot of work on um, the geometry, the sacred geometry um, of these statues. And as you can see, it all fits perfectly. Uh, you know, we've got the double vesica Pisces here. Um, he also does it where he superimposes a flower of life and all these things, and it all works. You know, it's pretty interesting stuff. Philip Dunn, if you want to chuck him, uh, chuck him, if you want to check him out um, on YouTube, he's got some videos up. 
Uh, here's, uh, here's work again. This is from beneath, and as you can see, even from beneath, it's all perfectly symmetrical. So it's perfectly symmetrical every way, you know, which is pretty hard to get, you know, almost impossible, I would say, impossible to do by hand. So I think these have actually been printed. I uh, found this interesting. This is the scarab beetle, which uh, you find, you know, depictions of all over Egypt. And someone's worked out that it actually looks like the top of a human skull, uh, where we've got the two fontanelles, or the third sort of back one. Um, yeah, the Egyptian scarab, scarab, or the marriage scarab of Amenhotep III to Queen Tai, likely the father and mother of Akhenaten. Interesting gift to give to someone who doesn't have a skull like that because the elongated skulls only have one. Uh, only have one suture there on Fontanelle, as you can see. They don't have the middle one. So yeah, I just found that interesting. Uh, here's a bit more of the Antiquitech. You can see how you know, they were doing this precision work through very hard stone. I'm not exactly sure what kind of stone this is. It's not sandstone though. It looks like diorite or something. Um, some of the joints, precision work that they were doing. So it's the same stuff you see all through South America. Um, Turkey, you know, all these places where we've got ancient megaliths. Russia, you know, the Ural Mountains. It's all the same stuff. And this this looks like it's all from, you know, a previous, previous civilization. This, I don't think, was previous to 1800 reset. This, I think, is... is Going back, I don't know, a thousand years or more, maybe. But as you can see, drill hole, you know, pre precision drill hole in granite. You know, that's pretty hard to do today still. They can do it, but it's pretty hard. Basically, you've got to core it out with diamond tip tools and a lot of water. Um, here's some of the size of the architecture. You can see these people. Uh, and this is huge. Now, this, you know, was this carved into this rock or was this some kind of mud flood that's flowed over and been cleared back, scraped away? See, that looks like it's been scraped away or something. And yeah, all these people again have the tall hats on for the elongated skulls. Here's another one look at the elongated skull, something, you know, to hide it. But again, this looks, you know, printed. It's just too perfect and precise and symmetrical up on his big crown. But this is also to show you, you know, look at this used to be a massive temple and it's just been destroyed. You know, here this looks, looks like a statue without a head here. Yep, so that's a statue there. It's had its head knocked off. This down here looks like it might have been there. I oh, know there's two of those, I'm not sure what they are, but they look similar to what's up here behind his head. Um, but yeah, so something smashed into Egypt too and destroyed it. You can see here all the outside pillars taken down, you know, it's just broken everywhere. Um, and again, look at the size, size of the people, size of these pillars and these buildings. And again, you know, this guy's face is gone. But, you know, look, just, just in that shot there, there's three massive, massive statues. I mean, look at the size of the people. Oops, they're not people. That's a person there. Not sure what that is. <laughs> but, yeah, so the people, you know, are pretty small compared to these. Massive, you know, columns. Same kind of architecture we see everywhere, the columns and these sort of floral arrangements around the top of them. But again, why would you be building stuff this big if you were this size? It's a lot, a lot of work that you don't really need to do and a lot of uh, resources. Again, look at the size of these people. Right, they're down here. So this is huge. And look at the size of all, you know, all this work. They do all these carvings. So it doesn't look like it, any of this was built for people our size. Again, look at the size of the people. And just there, look at the work. Four statues just there. This one's been destroyed. It looks like, I don't know, some bombs or something have been thrown at it. And again, you know, was this carved into the rock or is this some kind of flow? mud flow or something, who knows. 
Uh, and again, this is just, you know, the pillars that, that we see this stuff everywhere, you know, it's, it's, it's bigger and not as stylized, but that could, you know, it's just the same as the Parthenon or, or any of these buildings we get. Um, and, you know, of course, statues everywhere, massive statues, and we see that everywhere. So that's it, guys. So giants in Egypt, um, you know, we saw all the old uh, pictures from the tombs and stuff, the antiquitech, the lights. And, and another thing with those lights, um, if inside the Egyptian, you know, tombs and pyramids, there's no soot. There's no soot on the roof or the walls, which means, you know, because obviously if you take fire in there to it so you can see, you leave soot. Um, especially just, you know, if they're just to sit in there just to paint all the hieroglyphs and paintings, you know, they'd, they'd be soot everywhere. So how were they lighting it? You know, they tell us they had no electricity, but um, who knows? We saw those pictures of those light globes and the, the snakes and the power. Uh, so it's just an overview, this one, just to show you. I mean, we all know about Egypt, but it is massive. Everything's over scale, um, and there's just so much work being put into it, and it just looks like it's been hit by a flood and then just smashed. I mean, look at this picture here. You can see bits of this temple just lying all over the place. Um, and these were big, solid buildings. So there we go, guys. Egypt, uh, sorry, <laughs> Egypt. Giants in Egypt. I hope you like this. Uh, please leave me a comment, like, share, and subscribe if you like this kind of content. Uh, and as always, be autodidactic, guys, because self-education is the way forward. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day, and I'll catch you on the next upload. Bye for now. So we wanted to talk about giants, hey? There's some giant talk, mate. I think it's one of the most fascinating topics. been researching the topic for many years mate and not not you know not many better people to speak to than uh, you, the man before me at the moment lucky enough to have a chat with again bro yeah. so yeah man it's um <laughs> it's, isn't john like, look at this building behind me like we're, we're talking about giants this is bound main post office in sydney well you know, <laughs> you know what i'm saying post office like it's built for giants. Look at the doorways, man. You know? This is the question, you know, like they say that we built them and even if we could, why would you build it so big in, in a new colony when you don't have, you know, all these mines and, and you know, manufacturing plants and That's right. resources and why would you do that? And then, of course, we get the photos of, you know, the little wooden shacks <laughs> leaning up against them where the people actually live. Yeah. I love that ones, yeah, and um, big, big difference in like what they could build and you know what they uh, inherited, mate. Like, darling, can you build me a house, please? <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Uh, one, one question we hear always when we talk about giants is where did they go? Would you like to fill us in a little bit on that topic? <laughs> As to where they went, sure. You know, who, what, when, where, why, what happened to them? Where did they go? How did it happen? What's your take yeah. on it? Yeah, yeah. Well, we know that obviously we had giants, um, it's in old stories, all the old books, and it's in the architecture. We've got photos, we've got news clippings. So it's not a, it's, it's not a theory. But we all know about the trees, right? The giant trees. Um, you know, the, the realm used to be covered in, in giant trees and we've got, you know, uh, the remains of those everywhere. And, you know, we have the stories like Jack and the Beanstalk, right? Yeah. Beanstalk, climbing up the beanstalk, climbing up the tree, um, tree of all this stuff. And then um, as, as far as we can work out from the, you know, the extra canon books, the books that were taken out of the Bible, like the Book of Giants and all this kind of stuff, they tell us that um, the, there were giants and the Bible giants on the earth, and they basically um, just started devouring everything, right? Mm -hmm. So, so these are big. So, I think we're talking about more than one type of giant. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we've got those stories are about big giants, and then, and basically this, you know, that's the story of the flood. They wanted to wipe out the giants because they were consuming everything, um, destroying the world, and so 
the flood came, uh, the flood was, you know, came uh, for whatever reason. And to stop um, the giants climbing up the giant trees and, and surviving the flood, they got the, the fallen angels to cut down all the trees. Wow. Now, if you think about trees, yep. trees uh, produce carbon dioxide, right? Taking oxygen produce carbon dioxide. Uh, an atmosphere with more carbon dioxide, things grow bigger. So literally there's, there's farmers, um, people who grow food and they build big greenhouses and they pump CO2 into it to make things grow bigger and faster. So they change the atmosphere. As far as I can see, they change the atmosphere. I think that's, that's what reduced, you know, because we have stories. And if you look into the Bible, it says that Adam was, gosh, how big was he? I think 60, 60 foot. Is that right? Something like that. Like big, like mm -hmm. huge. Like not, you know, we're not talking nine, 10 foot. We're talking massive. So I think, you know, when, when the atmosphere changed, that, that sort of reduced things immensely you know and all of, they tell us right everything was bigger in the past ice age you know woolly mammoths all this stuff you know yeah. even dinosaurs right yeah they might just be giant crocodiles and iguanas you know <laughs> um and then i think definitely after that we've been messed with genetically uh it's just it's just everywhere it's in all the old texts and of course we don't know how you know, how much we can believe about science and what they tell us. But if you look into it, into the genetics, it says that we have, um, we have, what do we have? 30, uh, 23 uh, pairs of chromosomes, so 46. And all the hominids that we supposedly evolved from, they have 24 pairs or 48. So they have one more pair than us. But we're also told that humans have, our first chromosome is fused. Uh, it's, that's actually two that have been fused together. Mm. So basically, if you're looking at, at that genetically, it's saying that, yeah, we're, we're a mixture of the hominids from Earth and something else. And at the very least, they've fused two of the genes together and that's made us a different species or, you know, something's happened there <laughs> clearly, right? And I think that, that they can inhibit our, our size and our, our lifespan as well. I mean, in the Bible, it says after the flood, and of course the Bible's you know a reference, but we don't know that everything's accurate. But it says um, after the flood, um, it, you know the Lord comes down and says, uh, basically now you'll eat animals. You know now the animals and the, the crawly things will be your meat, and your years will be capped at one hundred and twenty. Wow! Which basically we were living longer, right, than that beforehand. Well, you look at the the um, Old Testament and it tell uh, Genesis, right? The, which is what the generations or the genes of Isis, um, you know, Moses and, um, you know, uh, Methuselah and all these people, Adam, all the generations, they all lived. I think Methuselah was the longest at 969 years, was it? Um, and the shortest was like 500 years old. So they were living, you know, this is what we're told, 500 years old. And this stuff's everywhere. Yeah. But of course, that part of, Story we're told now that's just you know that's just you know an analogous or that's just a you know a story it means something else just a parable it's not real but all the other the theosophical books say the same thing you know you look back you know we've got it in the uh, nursery rhymes in old books legends and news clippings mm. news clippings right like and you know, yeah I was thinking about the news clippings because they're all from the late eighteen hundreds early nineteen hundreds like heaps of them um digging up skeletons right of giants but they're all sort of between seven and nine feet and the funny thing is we have a ton of photos from that same time period of people seven to nine feet so it's kind of weird isn't it that that there would be an anomaly if there, if there were all these giants everywhere and they're digging up a bone like but it, it, that's strange to me i've just sort of was thinking about that today because we don't really know when all these photos are, right? A photo is just a picture. And all we know is if someone writes a number on it, you know, as a date, yeah. that's all we've got. Oh, this is from then. We don't know that. So, so yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's what happened to the, to the um, giants. I think the atmosphere was changed and then we've, you know, we've had some kind of, you know, restrictor put on us. Because mm. it says, again, <laughs> I'm referencing the Bible a lot here and 
um, you know, I'm not, I'm not, a, I don't believe in um, organized religion, but there's a lot of truth in it. It, um, it says, you know, the fallen angels, the, these beings that came into our realm, um, started sinning, right? Sinning against the birds, the beasts, and the animals. And then, uh, you know, you look back in, in the old books and we have all these things that are called cryptoids, um, you know, and they're like um, dog men, right? You know, people yeah. with dog heads, all these, you know, all these funny pictures, you know, the people with the face in their chest or with one foot or, you know, they've got all the, you know, half birds. And then we have all these, you know, Egyptian gods, right? Like um, Anubis, right? Yeah. Dog headed man. Um, you know, we've got the, the falcon headed man, Thoth, and all these things. Yeah. Um, and but we also have um the same like the dog headed men, they're actually called the cynocephaly. And there's stories. There's a story about the a French king granting them land, like granting this tribe of dog headed men land. Mm. And there's lots of stories of them, of, you know, that there were these tribal people with dog heads. <laughs> so if, if that if that's true and that was sinning against the birds is that what sinning is is that genetic manipulation because what does it also say in the bible about us we're all born with what with sin does that's that mean we're born with genetic manipulation yeah that's a really interesting point mate. wow mm. Mm. let's just sit on that for a minute wow <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, there's there's and, many points, yeah. Yeah, and one thing I always thought about with the giants is, you know, when you talk about change, change in the atmosphere, mate, and carbon dioxide. And one thing I touch upon is, like, wow! I imagine the biosphere back then would have been insane before it was depleted in such a way, and you know, imagine movement in such a atmosphere. And then you've got these giant beings. I always look at it like a whale when it comes up to the surface. It can only stay up for so long before it's got to go back down to the pressure it requires to, otherwise it'll die. You know. So is that what's happened to these giants, mate? Yeah, I, I think it's definitely a pressure thing, and I think, think, and you know, this may be to do as well. Um, you know, we don't know if if this was caused by it. You know, people chopping down trees, right? Um, it, you know, there's a lot of talk about you know plasma apocalypses and things, and this is all talked about in the Vedas and the Samvatika fires, and uh, we have the Hopi legend of the the Blue Kachina, and these are all pretty much telling the same thing. And um, Thunderbolts Project on YouTube look into this a lot, and if you look into um, how plasma forms when it's forming, uh, you know, they form it in vacuums and things. And, and it goes through these stages of shapes and um, it forms like a ladder and then it forms a, like a cross and then it forms like, um, it's called the standing man. It looks like a man who's sort of squatting. And these pictures are all through caves, all the cave paintings, they're, every, they're all over the realm. These pictures mm -hmm. that look like the plasma are, are all in these caves. So, you know, this could have been an event that was just, you know, what psych, you know, cyclical, just something that happens. We don't know. Could have been, you know, caused, um, and it could have been a big event. You know, like because we've got the deserts. You know, all this. You know, like half the world got fried, right? Yeah, man. Australia, the area um, around where I live, and man. you know, I just did. No, you go. Oh, I was just going to say the area where I live, mate. Everywhere's covered in like six foot of clay my backyard is just all clay you drive down the street and the you know they've had to pull the for the when they <laughs> dug out the train tracks clay inside these big you know it's it's crazy mate yeah mm -hmm. then you know, the deserts of australia um were what you know is australia just a big big mine was it has it always been mined yeah or is it this cataclysm? I, mean, I think I think a lot of mining went on, and I'm sure it did in Australia too. Um, I tend to think that there was water in the middle of Australia, like a yeah. big ocean, and you know something's happened. And when that's happened, it's you know probably evaporated half the ocean, but also caused the land to change, so the water's run out. Yeah, and I think that's why we, why we have you know because we got salt lakes everywhere right through through the centre of Australia, 
they, they just bits of ocean water where they've evaporated and the salt stayed there that that's so you know i think australia i think a lot went on in australia so i think i think you know the the planet was yeah i mean and, and that could have been you know that could have again changed the atmosphere just just all the mining and stuff but i think it was more i'm, I'm sort of leaning towards you know because we're going through this change at the moment right age of aquarius all this thing and people always ask me oh you know the thousand years well does that change you know the the great year and, and it may but you know we're definitely in it right look outside look what's going on yeah. um, you know some people think oh it's a big game and you know they've moved it and this isn't really the age of aquarius and i yeah i just say look out the window man <laughs> tell me nothing's going on like we're definitely in the right spot um and so yeah this could be natural that that we get plasma events that that yeah. you know um change the atmosphere from heavy to light so we, we might even go from big creatures to small creatures and then back to big creatures and that mm -hmm. might be what we're what's happening at the moment right the sun's changing all these things and if if the um atmosphere changes again to to um basically it's going to be like less pressure right um more carbon dioxide things can grow bigger it's less pressure and then, then we have all these stories of superheroes, right? People that can fly. Well, what could you do oh. if we had this body and we've been living 50 years under this pressure and suddenly you got half the pressure? We'd all be superheroes, man. Oh, that sounds epic, bro. I'm ready for that. Fly to Mexico. <laughs> I'm ready for it too. We're we'll just both yeah, fly yeah. to Mexico. Uh, who needs us? An airship, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, airship it up, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah. You can just yeah. have a little fly. You know, we can just jump out of the airship and have a little fly if you feel like it. But there's also the cup. Yeah. yeah. And also the magic carpets, too, to jump on. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. But, mate, and we have all these stories like magic carpet. Sorry. We've got right. a little bit of a delay issue, brother, today. Just so uh, that's what's happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, mate, just back to the giant. So something's happened to them. We know they're bigger. We know the atmosphere's changed. We know that they've built these buildings. Uh, we know that they're more advanced than us. And, you know, not only the technology, but on a, on a conscious level, which is something that, you know, we talk about, you know, they talk about cavemen in the past, mate. We, they're, we are, they're cavemen now. They're literally. Mm. So I'll just go through some huh? photos. Of... Yeah, we've got. We've got... Getting, but you can see these are dudes. Are they little men? This block is taller than them. Like, literally. <laughs> this is um, bow back. And these are, this is the trilithon. These, these three at the bottom. Um, they're just three map, but you can see how big these blocks are. Like if that's a six foot dude, this is what six, twelve, uh, you know, twenty five foot tall, and God knows how long. I mean, basically, you know, how could we move that? How could and and how could even back you know then, we'd have trouble building machinery to move that? Yeah, and mate, back yeah, like back then, like, this, this is insane. What a great pick. I thought I was seeing things then. Those two little men. My, Brain was playing tricks on me. Uh, <laughs> wow, look at that. madness, right? So um, this oh, this is the Vatican. So you can, you can see these people. Yeah, been look there. at the doorway. Wow. And even you know, I'm always talking about these light poles, right? Um, these light poles, I think. Um, well, there's no one standing right against them, but you can see, you know, like these people m might, they wouldn't even be up to the bottom, you know, top of this pedestal. Look how big, how, how tall this light is. Like, what's the point of that if you're this short? Yeah. I mean, just look at the door sizes, right? Comp literally, they, they, if we do this, they look like ants. Mm, wow. Yeah. Right, mate? Yeah. Silly, and and this obelisk. They say this came from Egypt, and even if they could move it, how did they stand it up? I oh, know it's just insane. Look the weight of that. 
Nearly a hundred tunnels. Oh, huh? nice. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Doorways. Look at that. Just incredible. Again, they just look like ants. Like these people. That's ridiculous. They were such a sophisticated, um, conscious people, like a race mate, you know, and it's. Yeah. You know, and yeah. When, well, this is the end result of not telling people what to do, you know, when you let people create and use their, you know, their God given creativity, this is what happens. Mm. You know, when you're told you have to go to work five days of work and have a week and have a mortgage. And so you can never focus on what what you want to, and we get a world like we've we've just come out of. But this is where we're going because the chant at the moment it's all sovereignty. Don't tell me what to do, leave us alone. We just want to do our own thing. And when that happens, we get this. Because I mean, just look at what happened in Canberra. Yeah, you know, like all these people turned up. You know, it was just on this literally it happened in a couple of days and they all got into canberra and you know within two days there were kitchens set up they had toilets they had stuff for the kids they had water they, like they had a fully functioning community that was looking after everyone's needs and it just happened yeah because it was just humans doing their thing with no bloody authors authority jumping in saying oh. and of course they try to and as soon as they come in, they stuff everything up. That's all these people do. They just oh, no. destroy everything. Yep. Um, so yeah, this, <laughs> again, just, right? Yeah, oh, this is yeah, this is the Vatican again. But it's just you know, this is inside the Vatican. Yeah, mate. When I was in Italy, I had no idea. Like I knew something was up, and I was looking at the size of these buildings, the Parthenon, 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 and. Oh, half and on, yeah. Yeah, that building, bro, that's just out of control. And I'm like, what the hell? It's it's all for the glory of God. <laughs> Come on. All you and need is Michelangelo. Yeah, you know, okay. Enough people who go to church. 100 years, you can build anything. Yeah, Michelangelo, um, Sistine Chapel. Was he Sistine Chapel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, they reckon he spent like five years lying in his back or something or 10 years <laughs> <laughs> half his luck that sounds like my daughter my my daughter could do that yeah <laughs> she an artist and she, yeah, <laughs> no, she loves he loves laying down no she wants to lie and lie down yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, classic sorry i've got a fly here we have didn't keep dry well, again, I mean, we know Egypt is massively oversized. Yeah. Just everywhere. Taj Mahal, look at the size of the people. And I mean, it's, 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 do you it's comical. Think, yeah, and uh, I, I guess there must have been times when big, big giants were living with other size giants and, you know, there were smaller ones. Uh, yeah. Probably dwarves. It could have been, you know, the dudes with the the dog heads. Like the reality that was before us, mate. It's just absolutely fascinating. And nursery rhymes. How interesting, mate. You know, there's. I think there's a lot more truth in nursery rhymes than, um, like you touched upon before, Jack and the Beanstalk. Mm. Yeah, there's Jack. Oh, that's there's not Jack. Jack. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, that's the giant. Oh, that's the giant. This is Jacqueline. Gaz is getting mixed up. And and in all these old photos, you'll notice that, I mean, look at his clothes. They fit him perfectly. Who's making these clothes for these giant people? Because they're always so well dressed. You know, you would, you would, you know, yeah. when you see giants today, I mean, most basketball now, I guess, but in the past, you know, they just have to sort of. Nothing would really fit them properly. I mean, look at this chick. Like right? she's dressed to the nines. Wow. Yep. Yeah, this wouldn't mess with her, would you? What's no. her name? That's obviously. So she's from New York. So these are all around the eighteen hundreds, and this is just and look at the doorway. The size of the 
they were finding. And see the door, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. well, that's probably yeah. more. You know, that's they were made for these yeah, types. Nice. Yeah, and then they just put the little yeah. glass bits in the top of the door. You know, the door frame, and say, "Oh no, no, it's to let light in." <laughs> of course, it is. Yeah, yeah, that's. A good and of one. course, yeah. another, you know theory about what happened or may have happened to the to the giants is uh you know we have lord of the rings right and um in an interview uh jr tolkien said that um lord of the rings was basically a story about the past the, the story of humanity and he had access um, i forgot what the university it was but he had access for like 20 or 30 years to like a, a you know a locked off library underneath the university which, which looks like it had all these old books in it wow. and, and what happens at the end of, of lord of the rings right the elves which are really the giants in the lord of the rings right yeah they are they all they all leave right they, they go back to the um to the where do they go the inner world um we've got three worlds in it i can't remember what they are uh, but they go to an outer world, right? <laughs> Do they go to more land outside the wall? Mm -hmm. um, now this dude, I don't think this guy's a proper giant. This is probably a very small woman. I mean, he's tall. Yeah. But see, see how skinny yeah. he is, and see, and also see how his clothes aren't fitting him properly. But see how skinny he is, especially across the shoulders and stuff. Yeah. Not he, he's very tall and skinny. He, that's a thyroid giant he's got um his thyroid's producing too much growth hormone and these people grow tall and skinny and by the time they're about 25 they they literally can't support themselves after they, you see them they've got leg braces on and they got have to use walking canes and things okay yeah so we get so that's that's not an actual you know proper giant as in like these dudes okay. right these yeah. these dudes are not skinny these are literally just like a normal dude but bigger yeah Mate, there's, there's pictures of those two changing light bulbs in the street just casually. Yeah. And, and exactly right. That's sort of like, well, it, that, that makes sense if you're this tall, right? Those, those street lights. Oh my gosh, people. Um, and but again, they're very well dressed, aren't they? And yeah, and that's the thing that you, you, you do see a lot of the time in these pics, mate, have you touched upon? And have you seen the, the giant where, um, I think it was Richard Lopez did a video and this giant walks through the crowd and you can only see, like, as he's walking through the crowd, you can see the people's yeah. heads and they're up to, like, yeah. hip. And then the giant seems to have a protector. It's really interesting footage, mate. And just, this protector pushes all the people out of the way. Not like the Japanese one? Oh, that's a different one different one okay yeah that mate wow um yeah really interesting yeah no i haven't seen i have to check it out yeah man it's it's a shivers up the spine sort of material mm, and like, um, yeah, in, so. in this video you made this guy's suit you can see he's, he, and the way he walks he composes himself like this giant you can only see three, like three quarters of his body, but you can see the height of him, and just the way he conducts himself. You know, his posture, his his comfortability, his uh, confidence, uh, and how well his suit fits in. It's yeah, it's it's great, great footage, man. Yeah, but yeah, is just, that recent? So it's, footage it's pretty or old. It's, no, that's old, really old footage. Yeah, it's like one of the first original footage that we have like, of any mm. anything. I don't know where Richard's um, got this. Um, you know the guy, the husky voice, real husky voice, Richard Lopez, an American guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so it seems like they've invented basketball for these guys. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. And wrestling, maybe. Who knows? Uh, Check that. And that's why. Uh, and, and we still do have giants around. Um, there's actually a village in uh, France, northern France, 
um, where they have an unusually high amount of giants. And I actually try and say that it's because of uh, some seed oil they rub on their feet or something to stop that because they work in the mountains or some silly story. And then we get stuff like this, right? I mean, who knows? That look, kind of looks like a face, right? Yeah. That's a big rock. And then, I mean, this, obviously. Well, that's, yeah, man. And that's what we're talking about. This is like, more the Titan. Right? Yeah, that's right. Different sized um, giants. So you've got your got those legs. Titans. Wow. Mickey Rooney. <laughs> Mickey Rooney, yeah. And this is what they do as well, obviously, with um, most of these pictures that they put them next to short people to make them look bigger. Yeah. But you can still see this chick's pretty much eight foot tall. She's, she's, they're, those legs are as, uh, like, they're five, more than five, they're as tall as Mickey Rooney, man. Yeah, she's Long got legs, like that's five crazy. feet. But that's like this guy, this giant walking through the, this crowd of people. And it's seriously a real interesting, um, mate, you could do a video on this video. It's crazy. Yeah, I have to have a look. Um, there's a picture of, um, I believe it's in France. I don't think it's it's one of the gates. It's not the it's not the Arc de Triomphe. I don't think, but um, there's a there's like a painting from the 1700s, 1600s, and it just shows people in front of this you know this arch, and the arch is still there today. And so someone got a picture of people in front of the arch today and put it next to this old painting, and the people in the old painting are clearly double the size of us. Mm. They're, they're like 12, 14, you know, because you can see how tall they are against the the arch where they're standing. Yeah. And, of course, lots of them back in the day, they, they were like in the freak shows at circuses or they were performers. Always, you know, they're always sort of performers to sort of, I don't know, I guess it stops people asking questions. It makes it look like they're just an anomaly, you know, like they're freaks, freaks of nature. Yeah. Very but clearly. They, yeah. You know, if we've got this many photos, imagine how many were out there that didn't get photographed, you know, because we're talking early 1900s, late 1800s, not like there, there were heaps of um, photograph uh, cameras yeah. around. And then we've this got, one, you can't see the size. That's a giant sorry. key, though. Yeah. How big would yeah. that be, mate? Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. big. Well, we've seen the size of that. Um, so yeah, some of the gates on some of these. 15 centimetres. Wow, cool. Mm. Mm. Oh. Bad luck. Wow. I mean, even to lock that and try to, it's a two-man job. Yeah, I know, right? You know what I mean? For well, that's, us. Yeah, that's a two-man job even right there. Even this lock, just look how well it's made. I mean, it's just obviously made for function, but it's even got this really nice little brass door that goes over and stops water getting into the lock locking mechanism. I mean, we wouldn't do that today. Wow. Like that, look at that one. Oh, that's awesome, mate. Wow. Yeah, so we've got, uh, th these are the Patagonians from South America, and that's written up Magellan. Yeah. They're in the 1480s, I believe. He writes about the, the the giants. And, of course, Patagonia is very close to, the you know, it's down south of South America. It's close to where um, South America, you know, goes down to the to the Arctic, right? And then the land that, it's, that it almost touches is called Terra del Fuego, the land of fire. On all the old maps, right? But it's in the Antarctic, mm. which is they tell us is covered in snow, right? The land of fire. That doesn't make sense, but it's very quite Like, is that is that one of the one of the land bridges? You know, was that a land bridge where bigger people could either leave this realm or maybe come into this realm? You know, maybe they saw the the parasites come in and they were just like, "We're out of here, man. We're just we're, we're just going." And, and they just might, might have taken off to greener pastures, just like it tells us in Lord of the Rings, right? The elves, oh, we've got to go back to our land now. You guys got to look after yourself for a while. Because they do tell us everything, right? Look at that. That's amazing. 
I mean, imagine and of course, that, the further sorry. you go back, the bigger, the bigger they get. So yeah. there you are. Now, as this is day, mate, imagine the daily lifestyle. Just wow, that's what that's that's what I find really interesting. You know, just trying to soak into a an, an everyday day when you're dealing. Wow, look at that! So cool. Mm. Yeah, dealing with giants and walk down the street with your dragon, you know. Well, I think that's what it was. I really, you know, I think we had a lot more than giants. Yeah, man. And um, I think we had, you know, dwarves, and you know, we've got all the all all the bones and stories about them as well. Little people and fairies, and you know, who knows what else. That's it, mermaids. Like these, these stories. Like unless every like these people are just on drugs, like riding stuff, because the very vivid imagination. And get, don't get me wrong, a lot of it probably is with people off their head on like, writing stories. But you know, there's still a lot of truth in in these nursery rhymes and movies. Mm. That's yeah, how they tell us, right? This whole concept of they have to tell us and everything has to be done by, you know, consent. So they just tell us, they just don't tell us that they're telling us. <laughs> That's it. Well said. That's it. Yeah, man. That's just the scam. It is a scam. And yeah, mate, I've seen through it from a little boy. Crazy. Yeah, mate, I, I, giants, I think everyone's fascinated by the, the story of giants. Um, it's it's one of those things. It's And the Smithsonian's had a major part in covering up all that sort of um, the truth, mate, you know. Um, mm. Yep. Um, they had to do it. Oh, is it Snopes or something? Are they the, the, the old fact checkers? They had to put out all these fact-checking stories because it came out that the Smithsonian were dumping giant skeletons in the ocean. Yeah. And now literally you try and search for it on Google and it's just all these fact-checker articles. Oh, no, this isn't true. And that's, of course, you know, they don't look at the evidence. So you say, oh, no, this isn't true. And um, expect us to believe it. But, I mean, the evidence, there's just, there's just too much evidence, right? Like this. Libraries full of giant books. Mm. And hey, look at yeah. that. Mm. Wow. Gi and giant it's music. It's a different language. language. Yeah. We, we, oh, wow. Look at that. This looks like, this looks like music. Yeah. Doesn't it? It, the, we, the, some of it does. Yeah. Words. It looks like actual words with music. Yeah. Yeah. Words and, yeah. and music. Yeah. If you. And it looks like it's all written with um like fountain pen. Mm. You know, so it's all so even the writing's elegant, right? <laughs> like everything they did was just you know just done well. I know done now to last. Just living in the you know just look at concrete. I've said it before, mate. It lasts a hundred years. Like if you've got a civilization, it's concrete only lasts. It's designed to only last a hundred years. Then you've got to scratch your head and go, what? You know, mm. your phone, you drop your phone, it's certainly not made to last. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's definitely not made to last. I mean, it's just, Look at that book. it's a throwaway society. It's um, planned obsolescence, right? I think these it's books, because... because... sorry, bro. Oh, sorry. No, I, just, I, I think that yeah. book was actually just made for small children to view, for easy, like, you know, like a big screen TV. <laughs> you reckon <laughs> of course yes I, yeah. I mean i think we, they'd go to that effort yeah but, but, yeah. but the other thing about um that is all the map all the maps we get they're all massive all the old maps you know like the the um i think even the 1450 one but definitely the the planisphere the uh what is it 1497 or something that big one that shows all the extra land it's like it's 10 foot that's a 10 foot map why would you make so it fits in with the books right why would you make something that big yeah it just doesn't make sense 
And yep. that's an awesome one, bro. And we'll speak soon. Thank you for your time. Thank you, mate. Great to talk. Talk to you soon, Gary. Cheers, brother. See Take you, care. Have a good one. Thanks, yeah. good one. Bye. Hello and welcome. Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. Hope you're having a fantastic day. And of course, autodidactic means to be self-educated. And in this crazy world we live in, uh, we need to find we we need to be self-educated more than ever. Because if we're not, the only choice we have left is to believe what other people tell us. And that is clearly the problem we are facing at the moment. And so what I wanted to look at today is uh, the South, the Antarctic, and some land masses that appear on many old maps but uh, seem to have disappeared. And we're told that they never existed. Uh, but clearly someone was down there and mapping them. And the main thing I want to look at, the main landmass, is called Terra del Fuego. And Terra del Fuego literally translate to literally translates to the land of fire, which is kind of interesting when you look at where it is. It's, it is literally where we are told Antarctica is. And we are told Antarctica is frozen, not a land of fire. And on this map, I, I, you know, there's no you know, volcanoes or anything. You know, there's nothing that, that's um, hinting at any other cause of you know, it being called the land of fire. So uh, what is going on here? Let's jump in and have a look at... The Land of Fire, Terra del Fuego. All right, so that map there, that was an Abraham Ortelius uh, 1579 map. And we can see in this one as well, just look at the shape of South America. We can see it's it's different to what we see today. Today, this bit here is kind of gone, isn't it? So uh, we'll look at that in some other maps as well. This is, again, Abraham Ortelius. This is 1588. And this is a world map. And on this one, we get this huge land map. Now this land mass, sorry. Now this is on a lot of maps. And you can see the edge of it is green. It, it's not drawn as though it's frozen. And up here, uh, up the top here, the four continents of Hyperborea. And again, they are green. So what have we got down here? Because what we can see is we've got Africa, we've got South America, again, it's a funny shape. Uh, but there's no Australia. But down the bottom here, Terra Australis Nondum Cognito. And I've mentioned this uh, many times. You know, they say that they didn't know Australia was here and that they found it, you know, it was found well by the Dutch in the late 1600s and then, of course, Captain Cook and the English. But this map, which is 1588... Now that's before we're told the Dutch were here. This has Australia written on it. Okay, Terra Australis Nondum Cognito. Uh, the land of Australia. <laughs> and I put Australis in into translate and it just comes out as Australis. So I'm not sure what the etymology there is. And so it is the land Terra of Australis and Nondum Cognito is not yet known <laughs> which is an interesting way to write it isn't it not yet known but here it is uh, clearly it, they've named it they've written not yet known down on a landmass down here 1588 okay so 
you know, Australia is basically here. You know, it's not under South America, it's not under Africa. So, and this we can see this uh, juts up. So, is this Australia? Because there's this funny island here, and this is in a few maps as well. I'm not sure what that is. It might be. Oh, there we go. New New Guinea. That's what I was about to say. New Guinea. Okay. So New Guinea. And so this looks to be the land mass um, that, I don't know, became Australia maybe. But it looks like it was connected. Um, the continent of Australia. Nonum Mag Malaginum region. Um, so, I don't know, not mapped or something. Um, down here, Terra del Fuego underneath South America. Underneath America, we've got the uh, Siticorum region. Is that how you say it? And then up here, uh, we have other land masses coming up underneath uh, Asia, on the other side of Asia. So I'm not sure what, what, yeah, what happened to this land either, but clearly this is, you know, 1588 and everything's looking pretty different. This is Jokadus uh, Hon Hondius. Uh, the map was somewhere between 1606 and 1619. Uh, America, Septrio, which is North, North America uh, region. We can see here France. This was New France. Uh, and what you find is Florida is always there in the old maps. But down here, South America, and what, what do we have down here but... Uh, Terra del Fogo here, but Terra del Fuego, and also look, Terra Australis. Okay, so something weird going on here. Interesting picture here, now I'm not sure what's going on. Alright, these guys, you know, playing the flute, and they're eating. And he's like, yeah, that's good food, give me some more. Yay! Over here, they're cooking the food. And here, that they're not enjoying the food. They're, they're, so I don't know what's going on. Or, or maybe are they cleaning their teeth, maybe? I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, um, uh, Ficum, that's what I say. <laughs> Mari, oh, Mari Pacifica. Mari is uh, ocean, so the Pacific Ocean. Uh, it seems to be sea as well. Like they, they sometimes, like the Caspian Sea, they call Mare. But down here, now this little bit through here is called the Straits of Magellan. So you'll see Magellan written around a lot here. So here I'll go Magellanu. And up here we have Patagonia. And Patagonia is, of course, the land of the giants. And this is pretty tricky too. These guys are out in a boat and they've got a fire. And they look, you know, um, not well dressed. I mean, they've probably got something on, a bit of a cape, but not dressed for the Arctic. Here is another map. This is a Makeda, 1630. And again here, America, we've got Brazil. Down here we have the giant of Patagonia. And Terra del Fuego, or Terra del Fogo. This, uh, actually, is this, this has got the same picture of the people in the boat. Um, this is different. And here, here we've got a picture of one of the cities of Peru. And as we can see, it's a big walled city in Peru. Now this uh, 16, what was it? 1630. Big world cities in Peru and, and South America still pretty much, you know, attached almost to, te to Terra del Fuego, the land of fire, which again is drawn as green. Uh, another, this is another Abraham Ortelius, 1587, new description of America. And again, down here, Chile. Chile's been there for a while. Um, it's often called the, the Kingdom of Chile, if you go back, you know, 1600s or beforehand. Uh, Patagonia, and here it says, the region of the giants. Region Gigantum. Uh, I've got the Rio Grandes there, and down here, Terra del Fuego. Now look at this. We've got all the towns or ports or whatever they are named. Okay, so there's places here and Straits of Magellan. You can see that's not a big gap. Um, you know, you can see like the width of this 
river here is wider. And down here, so this is 1587, Ortelius, but yeah, just this big landmass. Now it is actually white here, which is interesting. And um, Australia are up here. So we've got New Guinea, which is now above Australia. These look like the Solomon Islands, is that what they're saying? Insula Solomus. Uh, and Australia, Terra Australis. Okay, Australia, and what was it? 1587? But they say they didn't know it was here. So there we go. Uh, this is a picture of the giants. Uh, in Terra, this, this says to, in Terra del Fuego. Okay, we've got a giant woman and some kids and some people coming up here. Again, not dressed for the ice. Not dressed for the um, Antarctic. This one again shows you Terra, um, Terra the land of Patagones, of Patagonia, and uh, Giantum Regio, the region of the giants. And here we see two giants, and here we see um, an average sized person. An average sized man. And these giants, they always look like, yeah, they'd be dressed like hunters. And again, not dressed like it's cold. You know, they're right down the tip here. And here we have, uh, now, now they're calling it Terra de Magellan's now. The, the Magellan tried to claim this, I think, because you can see his name. Sometimes it's down here, sometimes it's on bits of South America. Uh, but he did get the Straits. They do call this the Straits of Magellan still. Uh, but again, look at this. With, you know, the port of... Uh, what's that, Defunzo or something, Sierra del Fuego, Lago de Le, you know, all these different places, they're mapped. They're mapped. This one again says Tierra del Fuego, 1600. All right, not dressed like it's the Antarctic, um, you know, looking just like, you know, big Caucasian dude with feathers. Not sure which one, you know, they're both the same height, so I don't know which ones, if they're both giants. Is this person tied up on the shore? Not looking good for them. But this was the land of fire, or so they tell us. And, you know, is that because it was warm? So, um, you know, and, and then we get to questions like, if it, why was it warm? You know, is the sun moving on the larger clock? Okay, this is America, India, Nova. This one is 1610. 1610. So again, New Guinea. New Guinea is not that size anymore. Uh, and it's basically two islands now. And uh, Tropic of Capricorn. Uh, look, J, there we go, J. J519, 20th of September. Terra Australis, a nondum cognito, so still to be discovered, not yet known, uh, but there it is. It's not yet known, but there it is, right? Madness. Uh, Terra del Fuego, again, green, and yeah, you can see there's the straits very, very, very close to South America. So, did the giants come from here, across, up? And we also have the story of the giants coming down. You know, the uh, the tall whites and all this kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, are the giants on the outer ring maybe? And, and they, they came in a bit and they got wiped out? I don't know, but it's very interesting. Um, definitely, you know, the, the Patagonian giants are mentioned heaps and heaps. And here we can see connected to this landmass, Terra del Fuego, which now has morphed into Australia and um, the An Antarctica. And Terra del Fuego is now a tiny island, or so they say. So this one here, this is um, Freti Magellanica. Now this is 1628. Now this is, you know, this is interesting because we have maps after this that show Terra del Fuego 
you know, across the bottom here, join to Australia. We just saw heaps of them. Uh, here we've got the new ocean of Australia, of course, before Australia was known, right, 1628. But look, this is, this is now, this island is now Terra del Fuego. You can sort of see there, Fuego. I'm not sure where it says the land of, but this is, yeah, this is, it's turned into an island. And here we can see Patagonians. Okay, I've got a giant and an average sized man. So what's happening here? It's now an island. And of course, you know, again, not dressed like it's the Antarctic. And we've got penguins up here. What's going on? This is the former kingdom of Chile, 1646. And this, this is actually drawn sideways. So here again, you can see Tierra del Fuego. So this is south. Um, I can't flip it, I don't think. Um, yeah, so this is south, but there it, it's an island again, suddenly. And with giants on it. And this headdress, right? We see this, this feathered headdress in a lot of stuff. And clearly they're the giants. So see how he's bending over. Um, so giants, and it's an island suddenly. So what's gone on? You also see lots of you know, ostrich looking birds here. More like an ostrich than, a, than an emu, and they're not there anymore. Um, guanacos, they're still there, you know, armadillos, things like this. But it's an island. And here again, we've got more hidden land. So that would be from the south. So that's kind of still hinting that there's still some there. So is this broken off? Is this after a, a flood? You know, was there a recent flood? Or are these, you know, are these maps, you know, much, much older than we're actually told? Are these maps of the old world? Uh, Straits of Magellan, 1606, Jacket, uh, ja <laughs> Jodicus Hondius, and this just showing, now this is, you know, basically from what they're saying is the South Pole, you know, this, so this is from a, a globe perspective, um, America, Ocean, uh, so this is South America, and again, this is drawn upside down, and here, Terra del Fuego. Right, these are the Straits of Magellan, Riddler's Bay, um, you know, different bays down here, Bill Dotton Bay, you know, all these areas on this landmass called Terra del Fuego. And this is obviously the map showing you how to sail through here. So if they had all these maps, and this is called the Straits of Magellan, then, yeah. See, now they're saying it's the strait between the islands, but... You know, for it to be such a major event on all the maps, it, it's weird that it would just be between, you know, an, an island. You can just go around the bottom of the island if you look at South America, like that one there. Um, see, I mean, yeah, you can go through here, but you can... I don't know, there's a lot of emphasis on it. <laughs> Let's just say that. Um, all right, so, yeah, we've seen most of them. I mean, this is... So this is the thing. 1652, Johannes Jansonius, and now again it's an island, and it, now it's called Magellan, Magellanica, so Magellan's tried to get his name, you know, on a few things down here. Uh, here we have Mauritius, Mauritius land, uh, here we have a very rectangular island, Staten Island, island. Um, Le Hetman's Island. But again, look at these people. Not dressed for the Antarctic, right? But here we have penguins standing up in a row. So not looking like the, the Arctic, right? And up here, Patagonian region, giant. So what's going on? Uh, again, birds, right? Ostriches that aren't there now. They're in Africa, and emus in Australia, which are you know a bit slightly different. They look sort of different a little bit. 
So there you go. Even the shape of that island changes on you know on all of these maps. So now Captain Cook has got a book on visiting Patagonia and Terra del Fuego, uh, and I have had a look at it. It's it's um, it's not the best. It's all just it's basically just coordinates and stuff. But here's a picture. This is this is actually Lord Byron, um, woman and boy of Patagonia, South America. Receiving beads from Commodore Admiral Byron. Um, so I believe that's Lord Byron, Admiral Byron. And you can see the, this is a giant. Uh, it's a good foot, foot and a half taller than him. So Patagonia, the land of the giants. But Terra del Fuego, is that where they came from? This, this land mass that was attached you know, to, to Australia, by the looks of it, to the, to the Antarctica or whatever landmass is down there. And it was warm. It was warm. So was the sun in a different place? Because the sun's changing now, right? Is, it, is the sun moving its, its orbit? Is this what all this, you know, melting they talk about? It's just, it's just um, you know, the clock is just changing hour. And so places that used to be frozen will now be warm, and places that were warm will now be frozen um, as, as the clock goes tick-tock. So there you go. I just really wanted to sh um, touch on that. And, and this, you know, it's, we see it everywhere, right? And we see it up the top here as well. You know, we can see we've got the two land masses here, Hyperborea, and uh, this says north. Has this one got 30? And that's on 33, right? Orient 33 as well. Did you know that? That's where this was supposed to be. Um, 33 degrees of latitude, I believe that is. Um, so 33. And they also say pygmies used to live up here and, and giants. And then we get giants down here. So where are they coming from? Right? What, what's on the outside? So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that one anyway, guys. Uh, please leave me a like, a comment. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe, uh, hit the bell for notifications and share this content out if you find it interesting. And of course, as always, thank you to everyone who does support me and my work and this channel, um, you know, through any way you can. And big shout out to all my PayPal and Patreon supporters. Um, I really, really do appreciate your support. It does help a lot. And if you do um, wish to support this channel, there are links below and there's even some t-shirts you can have a look at in my shop and it all goes towards uh, helping the work I do. So thank you for spending some time with me. Hope you have a fantastic day and I'll talk to you all on the next upload. Bye for now. Okay, so to start with, I thought we'd have a look at some of the, you know, the structures, the buildings we find around the realm that are very large. Now, this is uh, Baalbek in uh, Baalbek, Turkey, I believe, yeah, Turkey, and, you know, pretty famous. This is, uh, these three blocks here, these are called the Trilithon, because uh, there's three of them, and these are huge. Um, I think they're I've forgotten what the estimated weight is, but it's hundreds of tons each. And of course, how did these get moved and put into place? You know, back they're telling us thousands of years ago uh, where there was no technology, right? No cranes. That's what they say. But also look at the size. These are people. Okay, so you can see that this man is about the height of this block. Okay, so this is like a six foot square block or even bigger, they're, they're rectang uh, they're rectangle. So you know, so six by eight foot by God knows how deep. So why the size? You know, because we only build to the size that's manageable, that's easy, right? That's why we use bricks, because 
they're easy to to lay to turn into walls with things like this it would be you know for people our size it would be extremely difficult to move all these uh rocks into place and of course you've probably noticed that as we go up the rocks get smaller all right got these huge trilithon ones here then you know these these are huge as well these are really big blocks but then Small ones, and again, these you know these are still large blocks. You know that's probably five or six foot long, by like three or four foot. Uh, but look at this: how they look like they've just been stacked up there. We've got gaps in the walls. We've got overhangs. So I'm not sure if I'd be too confident about standing here. But yeah, oversized buildings, and look at the size of the columns. How did they make them? You know, excavate them or turn them or whatever they did, and how did they stand them up? This is the Vatican. <laughs> um, look at now, obviously, we don't have all of this obelisk. It's just a cut of a photo to show you the size of the people. But look at the size of this obelisk. All right. These are people. So you can see uh, these bollards at the front, they're about, you know, half the size of these people. It's what, three, three and a half, four, four three, three and a half foot, three foot, <laughs> three foot. If they're six um so and then at the back they're taller they seem you can see these people these ones are about the height of a person so you know five and a half six feet and they don't even come up to or well, they just come up to this first base bit on this obelisk okay we've got this pedestal the obelisk doesn't even start until up here i mean that's like 50 foot in the air now look at this building Okay, <laughs> these are real people, real human size people. Look at the size of these doorways. Now, this is a small doorway, so it's not the best resolution, but you can see this is a person. This doorway is a good three times as high as them before we hit this lintel. This one, four, four times as high. Look at the size of these doors. Look at these columns. How tall do you think they are? I mean, what are they, 50 foot? How did they make those and how did they stand them up? And look at these lights. These are street lights. Now, unfortunately, there's no one standing right next to them. Oh, what have we got? Anything over here? Not really. But they look to be, you know, these base bits of the pedestal seems to be about the height of a person, you know, four or five feet, say. So what's the top? You know, 25 foot off the ground. If these were put in as gaslights, like we're told, how much light could a gaslight actually give off? Right? I'm thinking, you know, a good one, you'd have a circle like this. It wouldn't even touch the ground. So what use is it for people this size? If they were electric, of course, which we're told they weren't because they didn't have electricity, then they would work more. Um, but also if you were bigger, you know, the light would be at your head height, wouldn't that? I mean, look at these horse and carts. They just look like little toys. This is in France and another cathedral, you know, apart from all this antiquitech all over it, that's just covered. Now look at the size of the people here at the door. Look at this again, you know, this is a, I mean, this would be four times as high as them and this one would be five or six. Who were these doors built for? Why are they so big? Even the windows. They're like 20 foot windows. And oh, actually, one thing just on that last picture look at the size of this person and look at the size of these statues of people. They're like three times the size of a person. Ridiculous. Now, this is a drawing and it just shows you tiny people in this amazingly huge, massive building. And this, it's an onculus. Uh, this looks like it's in the Vatican, but the inside looks different to what it is now. Uh, is it called the onculus? I think it might be. Um, but the inside looks different, but I mean, how's the size? It's just ridiculously oversized. Now, why would you do that? Why would you build something this big? This is the Vatican again. Uh, we've got the full obelisk here. With, um, they've put a little cross on the top to let us know it's not Egyptian. It's definitely Christian. It's definitely to do with the Vatican, right? 
and just these tiny people. Like look over here, this is a horse and cart. And look at the size of this pillar. Again, who were they built for? Even this fountain. Look at this fountain. Right? This is a person. It's, it's a 25 foot fountain. Does this dude look rather tall? Not sure. We'll get into tall people in a minute. This is inside uh, the Vatican, St. Peter's Basilica. Is that right? Uh, and I mean, again, just, I mean, apart from the intricacy, right? Look at how this thing is finished. You know, again, we couldn't do this. You know, I mean, maybe over lifetimes, but I mean, these buildings like this are still everywhere, but there was definitely a lot more. I've been knocked over, but. Look at the size of the people. Like seriously, how tall is this roof? Why is the question? Why would you build so large? You know, you've got to use so much more materials. It takes so much longer. You need so many more, you know, uh, people to build it. You know, artisans and craftsmen and builders and architects and designers and all this stuff and all the materials and you end up with a building like this, which, you know, you can only use the top, you know, six or seven feet. There's no floors in here. And it's just, this looks like it's made for bigger people, doesn't it? It's ridiculous. Uh, this is Egypt again. Uh, I think this is Abydos or around and uh, it's just a drawing, not the best, but you can see the size of the people compared to these pillars. The Taj Mahal. We've all seen it. But did you know how big it was? Look at the size of these people. They are tiny. And I mean, just compare these people to these, you know, window arch things. I mean, and this doorway. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Even these top bits that are open, look at the size of the people. They would, you know, you'd hardly see them above this wall. And, and of course, you know, this has got again, see, a bit hard to see, but there's actually four balls there. Same here. And these are all like antennas and things. It's all antiquity. This is a resonator. So are these. Uh, these, they call them belfries. These um, are actually uh, etheric energy collectors. They, they, they collect ether, uh, you know, etheric energy, free energy from the ether. And we're still working out the, you know, how it worked properly. We've got most of it. And, and what we're thinking is that this was a spark gap generator. So you'd have a spark gap like a spark plug does, uh, which turns the energy into plasma. It has to turn into plasma to go across the gap. And when that happens, you get a massive energy increase. So you can, you know, put, you know, say five volts in here, run it through a spark, uh, through a gap, a spark gap and you'll come out the other end with like you know 100 volts so we'll, we'll get into the antiquitech there's a lot to cover here now this one here is penn station old penn station or, or old pennsylvania station it was in new york and again this is one of the names that keeps popping up in in the usa it's pennsylvania it's uh you see a lot in old maps in florida california a few other bits and pieces but Again, look at the size of these people. Literally, the, the base of this light is, is as tall as these people. Okay. I mean, this is just ridiculous size. This is ridiculous. Now, this is in New York. Okay. It snows in New York. How would you heat this building? I mean, seriously, they want us to believe that someone has come along and designed this and and got enough people to agree with them to get funding. Yep, let's build something this big and this intricate. Uh, that they've had all the industry to get all the brick, all the marble, all the glass, all the iron, all the everything that's needed, and all the workers to run it, and all the transport. And then they've built it. And, and through that whole process, no one has asked the question, how are you going to heat this? It's going to be really, really cold and unusable, basically, in winter. No, they just went ahead and built it. You know, so so it just doesn't make sense. This is Penn Station, Pennsylvania Station. 
they've knocked it over now, unfortunately. Uh, but this is it from the outside. Um, and, you know, looking fairly Greco-Roman, right? And this is what we see all over the realm. Always, just the same stuff. You know, the big columns, these are called porticos. You know, the same thing, always got, you know, the clock. We're pretty sure that they're a later addition, part of the refacading. Down here we have our tram lines. We've got them in all the old cities. A few cars, horses, and a lot of very small people. Again, look at this light. This is a person standing back against this light pole and look how tall it is. It's like three times as tall. It's 20 foot in the air. If that was gas, because this is horse and cart. We've still got horse and carts. So, you know, we're talking early 1900s probably. We've got cars here, so 19, you know, 10, 1920. Um, so maybe they were electrified, but we've definitely got photos of, of these when there was no electricity, these lamps. So again, how much light were they giving off if they were gas? But look at the size of the <laughs> look at the size of the people. I mean, why would you not build a building, you know, a quarter the size of this that's functional that would cost you less, less materials, less everything? But no, they build this, and then of course they go, um, yeah, didn't really work. We're going to knock it over. So what really happened is this was founded. Uh, this. I mean, this was found, not founded. So they, they, this was found intact. This was built by, built by a previous civilization. And because it was so big and unexplainable, they knocked it over. And they had a really hard time knocking this over. It took a long, long time because the walls were th so thick. So again, who built this? Hi guys, how are you going? It's Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel and Autodidactic of course means to be self-educated and you want to be self-educated guys because believe me, you do not want to be learning what these guys are trying to teach us. As you can see here, a quote, well it's at least attributed to Napoleon, uh, history is a set of lies agreed upon. Alright, today I wanted to talk uh, and show you a few pictures of the Vatican. Um, the Vatican Catholic Church, where they their sort of main city, it's a city sovereign state, um, which means a few things. Yes, let's get into it. Okay guys, welcome back. Here we go. Okay, so just to start with a bit of information on the Vatican. Um, I like these uh, symbols. They've always got a double key on them. I'm not sure what that means. Please let me know if you've got more info on that. Um, okay, so the Vatican City became um, an official state. So officially the Vatican City State. Um, because of the, the Laterian Treaty in 1929. And it was actually uh, Benito Mussolini the Italian dictator who signed that off. Um, it's, uh, it's distinct from yet under full ownership, exclusive dominion and a sovereign authority and jurisdiction. So it is a distinct, it is distinct from yet under full ownership, exclusive dominion and sovereign authority and jurisdiction of the Holy See. So basically guys, that means it's self-ruled. Okay, it's an independent city state that rules itself and is sovereign. Um, as you see here, city-state is a sovereign state also described as a type of small independent country that usually consists of a single city and its dependent territories. Historically, this includes cities such as Rome, Athens, Carthage and the Italian city-states uh, during the Renaissance. Okay, now, go away. Down here, oh God, thank you. Um, okay, it says the population is about a thousand and it's the smallest state in the world, both area and population. 
Um, and basically it became, um, so it became a city state in 1929, but they started using it um, as a residence for the Pope in 1377, as far as I can find out. Okay, so um, now just a bit about this sovereign. Okay, because we've heard, we hear a lot of talk about sovereign and, and being a sovereign city, sovereign city, a sovereign citizen, sorry, um, and that, that that's what we need to be and that um, that gives you rights and everything. But uh, if you're looking here, sovereignty is the full right and power of a governing body over itself without any interference from outside sources or bodies in political theory. Sovereignty is a substantive term designating supreme authority over some polity. Polity. So what sovereignty means when people are talking about it is it's to do with law, uh, to do with the law that, that the parasites have created to, to basically to put themselves above us. So what people um, with sovereignty, it's all to do with obviously admiralty law, um, the birth, um, you know, through the birth canal, the birth certificate and all this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to cover that. Sovereign people want to get rid of that and say that they now rule themselves as the Vatican City rules itself. Okay, but the way that um, the law sees sovereign is a little bit different. Sovereign is a supreme ruler, especially a monarch. A former British gold coin, obviously, um, possessing supreme or ultimate power, very good or effective. So um, it's a supreme ruler is what sovereign means. And as you'll see on this page, um, a wide screen, <laughs> sovereign origins, letter, super, old French, sovereign, English, reign. Okay, so look at the word, sov, reign. Okay, Middle English from old French, sovereign, based in Latin, super, above, the change in the ending was due to association with reign. So sovereign is to, to do with the reign of a king or a queen is how the um, the law sees it. So being a sovereign state means that they are basically above the law. They create their own law. That's why all these pedophile priests are protected and they can all run back to the Vatican and get in the Vatican walls and basically have um, you know, the same as diplomatic immunity and all this kind of stuff. Um, obviously, lately they've had to throw a few of their bishops out because the pressure's getting a bit, bit much because of what they've been doing. Um, but yeah, that's why they're brother law guards because they're sovereign and they're recognised as a sovereign state uh, with a sovereign ruler and all this kind of stuff. And it all goes into their law, the Holy See, you know, ecclesiastical law. Um, yeah, a pot, a possibly. <laughs> How do you say it? Apostolistic or, um, but yeah, they have all these different but rules, but basically say that they have their own law. So the Vatican has its own law, it's self-governed uh, and is above the law. And the way it's run, um, the, the Pope doesn't actually, you know, exercise law on the um, bishops there. They basically just all have sovereign rule. Uh, just a quick picture here of saying, Peter's Basilica, nice obelisk here in the front, which is um, either called the Vatican obelisk or Caligula's obelisk, um, because he gave it to the Vatican apparently. Um, sorry, my computer's being a bit slow here, guys. Okay, so just a bit more on Vatican City. History as the seat of the Catholic Church began with the construction of a basilica over St. Peter's grave in Rome in the 4th century AD. Um, now St. Peter is, if I'm not mistaken, was supposed to be an apostle and the first pope. Um, 4th century AD, that may not be correct. Uh, the area developed into a popular pilgrimage site and commercial district, although it was abandoned following the move of the Papal Court to France in 1309 after the church returned in 1377, famous landmarks such as the Apostoli Apostolic Palace, the Sistine Chapel and the new St. Peter's Basilica were erected within the city limits. Vatican was established in its current form as a sovereign nation with the signing of the Lateran Pax in 1929. Um, so what they're saying here is in the 1300s, at the end of the 1300s or um, around that time, famous landmarks such as Chapel 
and the new St. Peter's Basilica were erected. Um, so this is basically right at the end of what's called the Dark Ages or the Middle Ages, guys. They basically went from uh, 400 to 14, the 400, the 4th century to the 14th century, so really the 300s to the 1300s. So it's, they're saying we've come out of this thousand years of nothing, no records, no skills, nothing happening, everything going backwards and, you know, just decaying. And then suddenly they've built the Apostolic Palace, Sistine Chapel and St. Peter's Basilica. And wait till you see these buildings, guys. I do have some pictures. Okay, let's have a quick look. Okay, so... <laughs> yep. Now, obviously, they're going to say that most of the... Um, decoration for this was done during the Renaissance um, but I mean look at these look at just look at that dome look at this artwork I've got statues everywhere I mean this stuff is just amazing ah there's some men in dresses for you Okay, look at this room. Now this, I mean, I'm not sure exactly where they all are. I think this is uh, St. Peter's Basilica. But just look, look what's going on here. I mean, we've got all these, all these dudes just lazing about up the top here. You know, just lazy statues. These two look like they're supposed to be angels holding what's some kind of probably been replaced. We've got obviously the classic architecture thing is look at the ceiling. I mean just look at the work in there. And you know this building, you know, thirteen hundreds guys, no roads, no machinery, you know, just out of the dark ages. So apparently, you know, no tools, no tradesmen, no artists or artisans. And we get this and you know what what are they trying to say that it was built empty and then fixed up in the renaissance not really sure but you can see there's these massive pictures everywhere so yeah guys amazing work here and just uh, look at the size of these whoops of these doors okay like there's not really a reference size here but you can see that they're fairly large doors uh, this stairwell, you've probably seen a picture of this, it's it's quite a famous one, but I mean, just look at the architecture in that. It's obviously um, Fibonacci uh, sequence to get that spiral, 3.14. Um, yeah, I just had to put that in. And of course, everything's just covered in this ornate, you know, artwork and craftsmanship. Now this is outside, um, as you can see, I mean this is in, in Rome, Italy, so they tell us this is Roman architecture. Um, but you know, it's the same stuff we see all over the world. Big domes, you know, the portico things, the pillars, and this is the obelisk with a nice antenna on the top of it. Uh, this is called Caligula's obelisk, sorry. Come on, pictures, what are you doing to me? Thank you. Um, but yeah, you can just see like all these pillars everywhere. The, the scope of the buildings, these are all statues lining the tops of the buildings. You can see them all across here. You know, the work that would have had to go into this, I mean, the work that would have just gone into just paving this courtyard would have been pretty huge. You can see, it's a, uh, I'll show you another photo. It's actually separated into eight segments. Um, but yeah, so that's a bit of what it looks like from the outside. You know, again, amazing architecture. Not, we're told that these buildings, these main buildings, were built 1300s. Now this is one of the domes. And as you can see, I mean, just look at the work that's gone into that. So that's a bit of a small photo, didn't it? And look at this hallway, guys. I mean, look at the artwork. Every, every surface is covered. Um, you can see we've got you know, urns and busts and sculptures and stuff, you know, on pillars, the whole way up here. Every surface covered. So where did they get all this stuff from? I mean, just to paint 
you know, to do the painting and the artwork on the ceilings and the like, and you know, a group of hundreds of you know the best artists in the world. So who was doing all this work? That's obviously we've got Michelangelo. There's some work from Raphael in here, um, but really, they did all this by themselves. I don't think so. And with, with what, who's been carving all these statues? I mean. This looks more like a stolen building to me, and the same thing as, as like in the world fairs, they just go and steal all the artifacts, and they just lay them up and like say, "Yep, this is ours. We own it all now." Um, you know, this looks like a museum, and what's a museum, right? It's a collection of stuff people have gone and found. Um, look at this. Again, I'm not sure exactly what buildings. These were all at St. Peter's Basilica and the Sistine Chapel. But you can see every single wall is painted with like that popes and things on them. Check the floorboard. And look at the heights of these ceilings. And of course, these domes, you know, the pillars with the domes, you know, sort of going off in four directions. You know, we see that everywhere, that architecture all over the world. But I mean, just look at the work that's gone into that. I mean, is that not amazing? And of course, it's all kept for the Vatican. So they can have their little pedophile club. Um, now, this, of course, you know, I'm not going deep into the Vatican. And there's obviously, you know, it's tied to Venice, to Italy. There's obviously the black nobility, the black pope, all this kind of stuff all seem to be tied to the uh, Venetians, who were the Phoenicians, who were the Canaanites. Um, and obviously the Jesuits are a big order of the Catholic Church and um, they're into a lot of banking and stuff as well. So this, this is just really, I'm just sort of touching on this subject. It's a huge subject. Um, this is the world's largest pinecone statue. Uh, it's about eight feet tall, I believe. And they say it used to be a fountain, it's got a hole on the top, and it used to be a fountain. And these are two peacocks. Obviously, the pineal, uh, here it is again, obviously the pineal gland, uh, many people think is represented by the pine cone. Um, and the peacocks there, they actually represent um, um, sort of ethics and good choices and things like that. Um, so <laughs> I don't know what it's doing in the Vatican, but the story goes that it didn't come from the Vatican. It came from uh, ancient Rome, and they moved it in the 100s. This is, you know, their timeline, um, and it came from the temple of Isis, I believe. So it came from a pagan temple, and it's sitting there in the Vatican, right? How does that make sense? Maybe this internal arch here too, isn't that awesome? Of course, we've got the statues here. Where this one looks like it's lost its head. But there's so many statues. There's so much artwork here. And again, where did it all come from? Who made it all? Look at this. I mean, look at that ceiling. And it's all so perfectly symmetrical. I mean, is that really done by hand? Each, you know, each square? I don't know. But I mean, just look at this stuff. This is a sculpture, again, in the Vatican. You can see the pine cone in the background there. Uh, this is a big mechanical ball coming out of another big mechanical ball. Not sure what that means, but it, there's the, I've forgotten the guy's name, but there was someone who made, I think he made six or seven of these, and they're actually sort of all over the world at the moment, in different cities and countries. I found that interesting. There is again. Okay, so this is an aerial view. Of course, you can see all the statues looking over. And this is the big, you know, keyhole with the obelisk right in the center. And this, you can see the lines here, this is divided into eight sections. Um, eight, obviously, me, it stands for, um, you know, infinity. It's like the infinity symbol. Uh, it's also the Chinese symbol of good luck. I'm not sure, I'm not really up on my numerology. 
Not sure that there is some meaning there, some geomancy going on. Um, now this is the Sistine Chapel. My mouse will work. So I mean, just look at the work in this. All the walls are covered with these really intricate stains. The ceilings completely covered. And look at the architecture as well. So everything that like all this was painted on curved surfaces too, guys, which makes it even harder. Again, this is it. I mean, just look at, just look at this thing. It's completely covered. In the centre here, you can see this is the famous picture that we see all the time of the Sistine Chapel. Uh, this one here, the God reaching out to the man. The synapse between their fingers. And then we have like biblical stories, you know, Adam and Eve, and they're being sent out of the garden. Uh, we have someone praying, you know, begging to God or something here. All these different pictures, I mean, a lot of it is biblical. Um, a lot of it is a bit strange. <laughs> um, this. Um, we've got Jesus up here, we've got something falling over with the pillar and someone being crushed or they're trying to hold it. I don't know if it's got to do with Samson, the story of Samson, I'm not sure. Um, but down here we've got lots of naked dudes. Uh, he is holding what looks like this to be the skin of someone, like a soulless body almost. I wasn't sure what this was. It looked like they were on rocks or something, but they're actually on clouds. Come down here, um, you can see there's people being helped up from below onto the clouds, from the lower realm to the higher realm. So I'm sure there's a different meaning to this, but the thing is, if this is supposed to be heaven, it looks pretty overcrowded and these people don't look that happy. It's sort of clinging to clouds. <laughs> I don't know, it's all a bit weird. Uh, let's see outside again. I like this photo. This is, I just found this domes as gun turrets. They got little rockets in the background there. Okay, here's another real shot. And as you can see again, just look at all this, all these statues. Now I believe that this is in what's actually called the Vatican Museum. And again, where did they get all this stuff from? It looks like they just looted it and just put it in the hallways. <laughs> Um, I and mean, look at this workmanship. Now, this you can start to see a bit of the scale. There's two people, and you can see the size of that doorway, the size of the ceilings. Even them compared to the size of some of these statues. Now, this looks like a very large statue. This one looks very small. All the floors are inlaid. Uh, the amount of work that's gone in here. This is the Swiss Guard. Um, they've been guarding them for the last, uh, what is it, 700 years or something. They're nice fancy uniforms. They still actually wear armour. And yes, they all have to be Swiss to be in the Swiss Guard. Um, here's a few more, you know, just the artwork. It's just everywhere. So this is someone with a cross that looks like a lady. It's something to do with Jesus' crucifixion, but what's this? Looks like, a, <laughs> looks like it's got a rocket string behind it. But then it kind of looks like, I don't know, what, a bird or I don't know. Jesus ascending, something like that. I'm not really sure. Um, this is the Vatican, you know, some of the Vatican famed library, and as you can see, the amount of books. I mean, again, just look at the roof, guys. Look at this. This is built in the 1300s, they tell us. You know, just coming out of the Dark Ages. 
Bene, per adesso faccio di sto. Ma why è così big? You know, if it was one of the first sort of major constructions after the Dark Ages, why, and how, why and how would they go so big? I mean, now, here we go, guys, look at this. Look at the size of these people. I mean, who was this built for? Look at the size of these doorways. I mean, my thought is they would have been, you know, exaggerated anyway. I mean, you can see there's a shorter one here, but I mean, it's, you know, times taller than these people. You know, it's like a 50, 60 foot door. I mean, look at the size of these people. They're nothing. You can see that this is the sort of, you know, the ornate sort of footing bit here, and these people are literally just above it. And how did they get up to paint all these roofs? What, to have scaffolding all the way up there back in the 1300s or in the, Rena the Renaissance? You know, we hear all these stories and see sort of pictures of you know, Michelangelo on his back painting the Sistine Chapel. But in reality, he would have been, you know, 30, 40 feet up in the air. So who was this built for? It looks like people bigger than we currently are. Here's another shot. Look at the size of these people. This is ridiculous, guys. Like, seriously, look at that. Look at the size of, of this building, it's ridiculous. And it seems to have, you know, like structures that sort of seem to, to denote a certain, certain sort of, you know, size, like, I don't know if that looks like a fireplace or something, but you know, on walls you have things, window seals and that at a certain height, so you've got these windows up way, way up here. And how big were the people that these were built for? Whoops. Uh, this is the keyhole again. So yeah, you can see it's sort of shaped like a keyhole. Um, this comes up to paint St. Peter's Basilica. And we've got, you know, the, I think this is the Sistine Chapel, but I do not know for sure. There's a few other buildings there. Now this is inside. Look at this. What the hell? And I don't even know what this is made out of. I haven't researched it yet. But look at that. It looks like a four-poster bed built for... A giant. And again, look at the size of these people. They are tiny. Oh, look at that. He's not he's up to here. And look at the doorways and the roof. And again, how did they get up there to even just to build that high, let alone decorate it? I mean really? Just so a bunch of priests could hang out and Know, control people and steal boys and stuff. Seems it's very, very strange. So that's what I wanted to show you. These photos, guys, um, of the Vatican. Um, and yeah, was it built for giant? I mean, I don't think they built this in the 1300s. I think they found it and they looted a lot of buildings and they put all their stuff in there, all their paintings and the statues. Um, and then they locked it up, and so no one could see it. And we know about the Vatican libraries, all the information they're supposed to be holding underground in vaults and things. Um, so yeah, but these buildings themselves, I mean, what's the, what's the actual function of a building like that for a human? Like seriously, what's the function? I mean, they tell us that they're, 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 you know, basilicas and cathedrals and churches and all this stuff, but really, what does that even mean? I think these are built for a much different purpose and built by much bigger people who had much better machinery than humans had in the 1300s or so, what we're told we had. Um, of course, the 1300s was right at the end of the thousand years that was um, written out of history um, due to the whole I, J, replaced by one sort of controversy from Alex Flamenco, uh, so yeah, um, Anatoly, sorry, Flamenco. So there you go, guys, this is the Vatican. I'm gonna have to do some uh, more sort of research. This is just a skim over, just to show you the scale of what these buildings really are and, you know, the kind of stuff they've got in them. I mean, it's just 
built in the 1300 guys. All right, so um, I hope you enjoyed that. And as always, guys, be autodidactic because self-education is the way forward. Uh, please leave me a comment if you've got any more information for me on this topic. Uh, like, share this content if you enjoy it, and subscribe. And, um, yep, that's it, guys. So thanks for watching. Have an amazing day, and I will catch you on the next upload. Hi guys, how are you going? Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. Hope you're all having a spectacular day. And today I wanted to have a look at Rome. This is a book I found from 1763. And it really shows uh, the size of some of these buildings that were around. And as we can see in this picture here, uh, we have quite a large building with a massive dome and this antiquitec that we see everywhere, the cross antenna, mercury ball, and then around the here we have the iron, you know, fencing kind of things that they have. Of course, the dome, and this is uh, that shape. It looks a bit like a capacitor. I'm not exactly sure what function that is yet, but look at the people here. As you can see, there's a person here, and look at the size of this building. A couple of people here. And as you can see, I mean, they look about half the size of this door. And also uh, looks a bit muddy. Got a wall in the background here because uh, Rome was completely walled. It's a star city. And just one other thing is the size of this building compared to these buildings. I mean, you can see these are quite, you know, they're not small buildings. This is two story. So these are quite large buildings. Here we've got people. Uh, but look at the size of this one in comparison. So let's have a look. This is the edifices of modern Rome. Picture. Oh, I've got all the statues here, Phoenician. Now, I think this is written in uh, Italian. Uh, Cardinal Carlo Rezonico, Viva International, uh, the Vatican. Okay, so it's the Vatican. And again, guys, look at the size of these people compared to this building. These are clearly the wrong size. This building was not built for people this small. And again, I mean, just look at how every surface in these old world buildings was covered. And this was in the 1760s. This was already built. Look at this roof, how they do the windows. It's just all done so perfectly, so symmetrically. You know, domes and uh, porticos everywhere. Look at up here at the side. But just the giant size of it. I mean, seriously, look at these people. Here's another shot of the Vatican. And again, I mean, these people are just tiny, aren't they? Look at the size of this person compared to this door. And again, just completely built out with huge three, four, five, six story buildings, towers in the 1700s. So this is the kind of tech they had. This is a horse and cart. And of course, look at the roads, they're all muddy. So how did they build this? How did they even bring in the materials to build it on these horse and buggies in this mud? You know, how did they get the foundation done? Who, Doug, who, who was the architect? I mean, and look at these statues. 
Look at the size of this statue. When you look at the building, that's a very, you know, compared to these people, it's a very, very big statue. How did they get it up there? You know, all this stuff, everything's completely symmetrical. Domes in the background, of course. And these are people. Tiny, tiny little people. Uh, a nice, very large obelisk. And are they hieroglyphs? They look a bit like hieroglyphs, don't they? Egyptian hieroglyphs. Uh, again, just in the mud. Just in the mud, tiny little people around and these gigantic buildings. And, you know, we all know about fairy tales, fairy stories. I mean, look at these. Look at this. Straight out of a fairy tale book. But were they really fairy tales? You know, we're taught to believe fairy tales uh, are just made up. But are they? And just look at all this mud everywhere. It's just mud city. So 1760s. So this wouldn't be too far after uh, the mud flood. So you know, probably a couple of hundred years, maybe. So a lot of it's still above ground, obviously. And I mean, the, this building is huge. Big tower here, Antiquitech. I'm not sure what that is, some kind of star. You know, just And it's the same as we see all over the world today. It's just supersized. I mean, look at the size of that building. When you look at these people, <laughs> how many people could you fit in there? Oh, my gosh. And this is still uh, Vatican, I eh? Oh, St. Paul's. St. Paul's Cathedral. Again, I mean, that's just ridiculous, is it not? And look at the symmetry of all these columns and the arches. And everything just done so well. And you can see this is a wooden roof as well. Everything else is stone or, you know, brick masonry. Uh, so this, I don't know if this is a re-roofing, but definitely many, many of these buildings were re-roofed when they were found. But I mean, look at the height of, look at the height of that ceiling compared to this person. That is just ridiculous. Buildings built for giants. And, it, you know, it's just this scene, isn't it, of just mud, you know, just nothing around, no roads, a few boats and people and carts and just huge, huge buildings that really have no place there and no explanation. You know, in, in the uh, mainstream narrative that we're given, there's, there's no explanation, there's no room for explanation of buildings like this. I mean, look at this big, <laughs> we still see these everywhere too. These columns that just for some reason have a statue. It's just a column with a statue on the top. Uh, and always on these big, you know, footings, altars. Uh, they're everywhere. And here, this one's a fountain. Got little tiny people here. Again, just mud everywhere. Nothing's level. Cows wandering about. And uh, this. I mean, look at that. that is one large building. And again, look at the one, this is just across the road, this one, this looks like a smaller building. These, this looks like it's made for, this, you know, look, definitely, look at the size of this guy. This is made for giants, but this one looks like it's made for smaller people. So what was going on here? Uh, were giants living next to us, next to different sized people. And look at this in the background, which has got the remains of a building that looks, oh, it actually looks bigger if you look at that doorway. It looks bigger than this doorway, doesn't it? 
And that's interesting that we've got a huge doorway here and then a smaller one here. Because look at the size of the people. And again, just, you know, antennas and statues everywhere. Another tower. And is that that same kind of symbol? Yeah, old world Rome. And this one doesn't look quite as big. It could almost be a mud flutter. Uh -huh, it's in a mud flood. There's mud everywhere. I've got this people. Is that a dog? You know, towers, Antiquitec, and just, yeah, horse and cart. Just, just completely built out. But no roads. No roads. How did they get in there to build these things? You know, clearly these were here, oh my god, a lot longer. Look at this broken off doorway. This is all been smashed out. And you can see this a bit higher than down here as well. And uh, that's just huge. Look at these people. And this is, again, 1700s where we're told, you know, wasn't much tech, wasn't much industry, you know, uh, it was hard to get, you know, materials and things. So if you were going to build a building, why would you build it this tall? Look at all that wasted space. You know, you could build it this tall and it would still be a three or four story building. It's just so much materials and so much more time and effort. And for what? To just what? Have a bigger space. Oh, and a nice old world garb. Muddy streets. And just, you know, the best arch. I mean, this stuff is better than we can build now. Best architecture you'll find. And look at this dome. And and they just do this so easily, don't they? They just go from you know triangles to half circles, from squares and triangles to this looks like it's an octagon shaped building. The dome on top. They're just all these different shapes and geometry and they just fit them together so perfectly. And just in mega mega size. And there's hardly anyone there. Like the streets are pretty much empty. Again. Ah, look at this. Look at these three domes. All with their antiquitec ten antennas. And up here, more antiquitec. And just a huge, huge, huge oversized building. And yeah, little tiny people running around. Uh, is that the same street? Maybe. There's all these people lining up <laughs> to get in this. I mean, that's just ridiculous. You know, who who built these buildings? Who used to live in them? How big were they? Is that a bell tower? Now there used to be bells everywhere too. The bells. Oranges and lemons, the bells of St. Clemens, they all seem to have disappeared. A lot of them are cracked, like this bridge. Look at this bridge. Look at that. Nice old world bridge, and it's just cracked off there. It looks like the other half there. It's just smashed in. Up here as well, that's as far as I can get in. It looks all smashed. Huge tower here. And just, yeah, a bit of mud flow everywhere. But check that out. So this is clearly, you know, when this was drawn, this is clearly an ancient bridge already. I think that's that building we saw before, maybe. But I mean, wow. Domes everywhere. And again, I mean, there's too many buildings and they're too big for the amount of people you see. And also, you know, for what we're told the populations were back then, this guy's got his little umbrella. See a lot of these. Uh, you know, traditionally we're sort of told they're like, like an Asian kind of thing, a parasol. I guess French as well, but they're actually in a lot of old world pictures. What's that? Smoke. And oh, look, look 
we have a mud flutter back in the 1700s. Look at that. Buried. So, I mean, these have got steps going up. Is that a retrofit? Small steps. They almost look human size, don't they, compared to the rest of the building? Nice tunnel going into whatever this was. And this looks like it's a bit short, doesn't it? As do a lot of these buildings and how much of these are underground, how many levels are submerged. Ah. Okay, this looks like we've got an interval here. Here we go. Uh, where is this? This is... St. Constance Hall's interior view, some kind of chapel or what they like to call chapels. Oh my God, look at that. Huge dome. Miniature people. You know, old world antiquity area. See the size of these people. Columns, and that's some kind of massive dome. And again, you just see, you know, this internal architecture that they can do with arches this way, then it's up, and we've got an arch this way. You can see that's a different angled arch. All these different angles. It's not easy to do. And then, of course, they cover every inch completely symmetrically with these intricate patterns. I mean, you know, we don't even think of stuff like this today. Just giant, giant, giant buildings. You know, what happened here? Did, were these people just plonk here from... From somewhere else because they clearly do not fit in these buildings and uh, looking very Russian back in Rome in the day and that actually looks like the outside of that last shot that we saw like the outside of the building uh, was it that one yeah see how this big dome might be that Ah, oh, wow, mud flood devastation. Here's this huge obelisk again with the fountain covered in Egyptian hieroglyphs. Massive domes with antique tech antennas. Huge buildings and just mud. Mud everywhere. People sitting in the mud. Broken bits of buildings. Carts and horses, that's all they're getting around. And this guy's got his sheep. And I mean, look how wide the roads are too. But look at that, that's just completely mud flooded out. You can even see like, see the levels on this building, they're not right. And of course, look at that dome. There you go, that was uh, Italy, guys, in the 1700s. Italy or Italy, Rome, Rome, and here we go, communal bath, an old fountain, everyone's jumping around, a few more people here, I mean, you know, and look at, this is just completely built out, look at that, I mean, is that not ridiculous, clearly, clearly oversized for these people. Little, little tiny people here. Massive, giant buildings. Oh, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Oh, this is Q Place. Ooh, nice big dome. <laughs> and here we have little people and mud flood devastation. The palace of the... Chancellor Apostolique, uh, something to do with the Vatican and the Roman Catholic Church. Maybe he was a giant because this is a giant's building. And it, it's just a huge building. Even if it wasn't oversized and big, it would still be a very large building. Palace of 
Rotunda. Oh, gosh, Rotunda. Wow, look at that. And have these been bricked in, these, do you think? Because you know, how old are these? How many times have they been retrofitted? This is looking very worn, very ancient. And I think this, I think, you know, these are all different. Oh, so maybe that is the last one we saw, but different to the first one. And completely built out. You know, people here having fights with dogs. Don't know what's going on. Don't look like they could have built any of this stuff. Look at that. Another pillar. And just the same stuff. Just giant buildings in a mud flooded landscape. So the mud flood seems to have been. I don't know, there seems to have been an event around the 1400s, mid-14 to late 1400s. Uh, and then, the, you know, as far as maps and things changing, that was kind of, and the dates and everything, we're looking at sort of late 1600s. So there's a couple of hundred years in there. Uh, then, of course, we have things back up into the 1800s, the Carrington event, 1812, and... Then all the world fairs started 1851 and it seems like the population's being re-released. But clearly in this shot, you know, this is post-mud flood, but clearly uh, there's little people here. So, uh, you know, was there a reset between this book and 1851 or are they just multiple, you know, releases of population? Is it just a continuing uh, game of shipping us? around to different places so we don't know where we're, we're meant to be I and mean, who knows but what we can clearly see is that this world here is a post devastation world you can see mud and stuff everywhere you can see that they don't have the tech or the skills to build these buildings but at the same time look at the clothes they're wearing you know well who was making all these clothes So again, you know, these people look like they've just that they're in the wrong place, that they've been released somewhere, that they don't really belong, and they've got all these clothes. They all look the same. All their clothes are the same, are but very high quality. And just yeah, look at this giant big balls here, and we see these everywhere. Uh, they make them out of concrete now, but it's you know, what are they emulating? There's a nice big Antiquitech spire. The Vie de la Palace d'Espagne. Water. What is that? It looks like an elephant, but I don't think it is. We've got old carts here, you know, and look at that, how ornate that cart, how a horse and cart is. Another one here doing a big burnout. What? Dogs, dogs everywhere fighting. Why is there so many dogs in these photos? Oh, photos, <laughs> drawings, and, and talking about that, they're very good drawings, aren't they? Like, they're so you know, realistic. And look at this step. Look at that. Up to here, going up the top to the twin poles with the arch in between. That's ridiculous. And are these... I mean, they do look like human-sized steps, don't they? So who knows, maybe that is a retrofit. I mean, the Italians are known for their concrete. Just everything is just built out, but then no roads. Look at this. This mud, and then it just flows down here, and then whoa, straight down to another level down here. So, how big is this building? I mean, if you look at that one, two, there's another three or more stories at least below this. And again, these are people just ridiculous, ridiculously oversized, and just. 
Yeah, hang out in the mud with the dogs. You know, while there's buildings like this. How many resets? Oh, this one's lost its column. Looks like, what's that? A bit of remnants there, two twin poles. Oh, is that the building? That's the building. Okay, so that's, yeah. Lost its obelisk or its column. Big octagon building here. And again, look at the levels. Off down to the side, completely flooded out, mud flooded. I mean, you can see it everywhere. Again, that looks like the same place. Oh, that's that big slide. It's a big flat walkway. Ah, oh, now look at these steps. Now we do see this, you know, this kind of configuration quite a bit. And what is this? You know, these are called landings, we're told, and it's like, I don't know, a respite, but I don't know, how big were the people in these buildings? Were they were these steps for the bigger people? And these are steps for human-sized people, or our-sized people. Because completely, look again, just flooded out everywhere. And, you know, of course. And this is, you know, these are people. So look at the size of these statues. You know, how... How did these people ever make something this big on a pedestal like this and get it up there? I mean, I would say they didn't. It's just it's just ridiculous. Too much of a waste of resources. Doesn't make sense. Nice big bell tower. And yeah, of course the old world was just covered in statues and obelisks and columns and domes and all this stuff done so well. But we don't seem to do that anymore. It's almost like we're being ruled by a different people or something. Just more of the same. Mud flood and giant buildings. This looks like it says government house. Oh, we've got some nice gardens here. They've replanted this one out, cleaned it up. And here we have a nice old world palace. Oh my gosh. I mean, these are just ridiculous. That stairs going up to this door here. Looks like we've, looks like we've got a door going down there. And again, just mud flood devastation. Of course, fountains, another staple of these old world cities. This one's got a fence around it. I wonder if that's one of the metal fences. And just, you know, ridiculous. Oh, there's another fountain there. I've got twin fountains. And everything's buried. Buried in mud and just people just walking around carelessly, not social distancing. Oh my gosh, more parasols down here. And look at this nice block work, huge block. Oh, okay, that's a fallen obelisk. See that, it's been smashed and it's got hieroglyphs all over it. Mud flood. No, no roads anywhere. Oh, look at that flood down there. So yeah, just completely a mud flooded out city, but you know, giant, giant buildings. I mean, what happened to these buildings? I, I'm, you know, I know some of them are still there and obviously the Vatican and that, but I don't think all of these huge, massive buildings are here. Look at these you know, people. It's just the sizes are ridiculous. I mean, they're probably like this tall. And domes, I mean, and there's no one around as well. Not the fact that, you know, there's no road so that you can get in there easily. 
And look at the size of that building. Alright, I'm just going to flick through these ones, guys, because it looks like we've got a few to go. But as you can see, it's pretty much all the same stuff. Uh, this guy's fighting with his horse. Dog's barking. All two dogs are on his side. This guy's been thrown off, I think. And someone's running up here. But, I mean, all these people, too, just, just look so out of place, don't they? In this post-mud flood world. This again, one of the you know royal looking carriages, as you know, people on the back as we see everywhere, they're just tromping through the mud. I mean, even this, this is an old canal. You can see even this has been mud flooded. More ridiculousness, stairs going up, half windows in the ground. Massive statues, and again, mud flood devastation just everywhere. Chimneys, what's that? Don't know what that is. Oh, ghost statues. Okay, just... <laughs> Don't know what to say anymore, it's just more of the same. Gigantic buildings, mud flood, I mean, this is just ridiculous, isn't it? Uh, I mean... And of course, uh, you know, oh my God, Rome was, uh, you know, it was still in mud flood in the 1930s uh, when it was dug out. This again, look at this, into the ground. <laughs> you know, he, he's going to fit through that archway. And then just these massively grand buildings. Obviously, you know, it's got underground levels. And I mean, that's interesting too. Just look at that. I mean, imagine if we got buildings that are flooded up to here, that have, you know, that are sort of built like this, that are built to have underground levels that, you know, not, not under mud, but layered like this. But then when the mud comes, you fill it there and you just lose all of this. Because they're always finding roads under the ground and things and telling us so they're, that they're Roman. Uh, how's that for a big statue? And is this just all, what is this? Mud? Looks like it. No one knows what's going on. This is their little market. Throwing together that, that's their marketplace. <laughs> but we're told the same people built this. that water? I think it is. Look at that. Water flowing through this building into a big pond. Wow, look at the size of that thing. So that's the other thing. I mean, what, you know, as I've said before, and many other people have, you know, all these buildings look like some kind of machines. Uh, and so with that last building, we've seen uh, a couple of people have touched on Niagara Falls lately. Um, so are these buildings also pumps of some kind, maybe? So there are plenty of pictures of big buildings with water going through them. And look at this, looking like Venice. Uh, this, oh yeah, just shadowing. So we've got our man-made canal down here. And... Just as I was talking about buildings with water flowing through them, see these? So is that some kind of pumping house? And there's another one there, or is it just to get, I don't know, is it to run off water? Is it access water? Is it to access the current? And just yeah, ridiculous architecture. Oh, here's that building again. Just more people just running around with cows in the mud. Uh, but we're expected to believe they also built this on the weekends. Here's our twin pillars. Of course, with our ball on the top. I did not know that Rome looked like this. And again, 
I mean, look at this too. This is broken. This is all smashed. It's like a, the remnants of an old bridge. But look at what the people are living in. This old shack made of wood. And look at this. Got massive buildings. You no know, bridges, arches. Everywhere. So who built all that? Because the people are living like this. They could build these. That that's where they'd be living. Oh wow! These are all boats. Look at that. Canal up to the main shore. I mean, look at that. That's just. Imagine if our cities were still like this. It's just a completely different look, isn't it? It's just. Just looks. I don't know. A lot better, definitely. Uh, is that a fire? I oh, know trees. Boats in the canal. Lots of mud. And this looking like a huge factory. Well, what we think a factory looks like anyway. And there we go. We have come to the end of our book of giant Roman buildings. So I hope you enjoyed that one, guys. I will leave the link for this below. Uh, I'll leave the link for this below for the book uh, so you can go through and have a look at yourself. But this is a thing. Look at the size of these little people. Completely built out town with giant, giant buildings and clearly mud flooded. So these are the questions we, you know, we look at here on Autodidactic and other channels as well with Tartaria and mud flood research. Uh, we do have a research page on MeWe. So please go across and join up we're posting lots of information there uh, there's some really good researchers on there we've got berserker bear is doing a lot of work with the admin and posting a lot of information uh, michelle gibson's been on and lots of other people so go check that out i'll leave the link below uh, and also yeah leave me a like comment subscribe share this content if you like it uh, help it get out there because obviously youtube are using their algorithm against this kind of information for some reason so it does make you ask, what are they hiding in his story? All right, guys, thanks for spending some time with me. Have a spectacular day, and I will talk to you all on the next upload. Bye for now. Hi, guys, how are you going? Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. Hope you're having an amazing day. And today we are going to have a bit of a look at Detroit, Michigan and some of the old world buildings there because there really are some amazing buildings. Um, I've got a message for, through Facebook from Nick. He's um, given me some of these photos and uh, just some pointers to have a look. So we'll check out his photos in a minute. But what we are looking at here, well, this building in the front is the old art museum of Detroit and unfortunately it's gone they knocked it over to build a freeway but not just that building I mean look up here and this is all sort of circa 1920s I think 30s might be a bit later in Detroit Michigan so let's have a look at Detroit <music> Okay, so Detroit, uh, Detroit, Michigan. Um, and again, yeah, just a shout out to Nick Valdez. He sent me some photos that we're going to look at, um, gave me a pointer to have a look at Detroit. And he also pointed me to uh, the stuff that we looked at um, in my video of the, um, what was it called? Uh, what, what lies beneath sunken levels. So yeah, so thanks for all that, Nick. And if you guys have any, you know, cool places to look at, cool photos, um, best place to contact me is probably through a Facebook message. Um, I get tons and tons of messages, guys, so I do try and get back to them all. If I do miss you, it's nothing personal. I'm just, yeah, getting a few at the moment. All right, which is good. So thank you all. Keep them coming. Um, history of Detroit. So the city of Detroit is the largest city in the state of Michigan and was settled in 1701 by French colonists. 
uh, the first European settlement above the tidewater in North America began as a fur trading post. Then it began to expand with British and American settlement around the Great Lakes in the 19th century. Industrialization drove it to become a world-class industrial power and the fourth largest American city by 1920. So it has a bit, you know, about the wars. They love to talk about the wars. They love to tell us our past is all about war, um, which is not true. All these <laughs> they of the Iroquois, you know, the Beaver Wars, New France, the French and Indian War, which really, these weren't wars. These were, you know, bad people going to the New World and killing good people, by the book, just killing the natives. Uh, so here we, you know, basically it's, it's all this stuff. And if we get down here, I mean, what, what this really is saying is, you know, it was founded in 1700, it was a small outpost, grew very slowly until about 1800. Then in 1800, everything that was there burnt down, because of course they had a fire, they always have a fire. Uh, where is it? Tell us. After it, <laughs> during the 19th century, Detroit grew into a thriving hub of commerce and industry. After a devastating fire in 1805, Augustus B. Woodward devised a street plan similar to Washington. Uh, mon monumental avenues and traffic circles were planned out in a radial fashion. Really? Okay. So everything burnt down and they rebuilt it. Like, of course. Now this is the early map of Detroit. And as you can see, it's a star fort, and it's an enclosed city with a wall around it. You can see there's pillars here, here, comes along the riverfront, and there's pillars here, and a big star fort. And it looks like that, you know, we've got squares and things, so I'm not sure if that was, you know, the new or the old. I would suspect that's what they've sort of drawn in as, oh, this is where we can build our settlements. But then you get this, which is the street plan which he apparently drew, which was the same as Washington, as you can see. Starfort's still there, but this just looks... I mean, if you look at Starforts in Europe, you know, the enclosed cities, that they're all like this. All this kind of design, this sort of wedge design, nothing, nothing square. You know, these days they just want to build in grids, but this stuff is all like these star shapes, angles, wedges. So did he design that, or was this already there, or at least the imprint of it, because it looks like a lot of the buildings were there. And if the buildings were there, was this just, well, let's just build new roads where they should be. Um, they do talk about the fort. They say, you know, they built the Star Fort. Um, I think they say the French built it, and then they had a little fight over it, and the British, you know, won it in, it was around here, the 1700s, 1770s. But yeah, it's the same old story. They find it, grows slowly, then it finally gets to a good size, everything burns down, so they rebuild it all. You know, like this. Now, this was built in 1887, they say. That, of course, could be anywhere in the world. And there's this as well, which is the Chauncey Gate, Chauncey Hurlbut Gate. And this again, look at the size of this arch, this sort of doorway arch compared to this, like the height. Now clearly, that's, that's half in the ground. And look at these, see the tops of these lamps? Always that same, sometimes they're round, sometimes they're squared off, but it's always that same kind of design, that's the same black. That looks like an old world fire, you know, uh, light post too, just the way they're built. See the bottom and they're all nicely turned or whatever they are, moulded. Nice angel on top. So yeah, a bit of a history of um, <laughs> Detroit, Michigan. So let's have a look at some of the stuff around Detroit, Michigan. This is some of the old stuff. This is from uh, built in the 1890s, the Moonlight Tower. It says it was the first uh, tower in Detroit with electricity or with working, you know, practical lights. And you can see we've got big old world buildings here. That might be that school, a school, um, I 
I've got a photo of, I'll show you in a minute. But I mean, and, and you can say massively wide streets, but not, not that, you know, it's not a huge amount of people really for all these huge buildings. Don't know. Here's another one again, you know, it's just big streets, not that many people, and there's huge buildings everywhere. Oops, with spires. They're just everywhere, all down the street. Uh, this is people working up, uh, working, lining up to start their shift at Ford Motor Company. And this, this says it's a campus Martius Park. And it looks completely different now, which means they're probably knocked over this amazing thing. This big fountain statue, or whatever it is, and this, look at this building. And of course, this is a mud flutter. You can see the windows. Um, now I think the rest of these, oh there, yeah, now there's this one. This is a church, Mariner's Church. What are they saying? Circa, oh yeah, so this is a photo of Circa 1936, and then they moved the church. They moved this solid brick building. <laughs> How did they do that? And of course, you can see the angle. It's a mud flutter, and it's got shops under it. Why would you put shops underneath a church? I mean... What are they saying? They built this church and in the design they decided they needed a bit of income so they, they built shops underneath it. You know, because they're going to tell us they built this in, well, 1800s no doubt. Late 1800s. What with shops underneath it? Explain that one. <laughs> um, and it's just a massive building, big brick, you know, red brick building and they say they moved it. Um, so I haven't looked into that, but it'd be interesting because I bet you they moved it and then I bet you it fell over. They knocked it over. Uh, and this in the background here too, this old world building. And this one too, it's just, this is the, the Opera Orchestra Hall in the 1970s. Now look at the top of that. It just, it looks like it should have another four or five stories below it. But look at the work, you know, this this could be anywhere in Europe. Look at look at that. And this is just all industrial, you know, car land stuff. Okay, so I had to have a look. <laughs> this Mariner's Church, it's still there. That this is the one they say they moved, uh, which we saw here. And this is what they're saying is it. Now this you can see a big window. This must be the different side, but you can see this side here. does look similar to this and that window I'm not sure obviously this bottom bits completely different that talks shops there but the thing is why would you do that if, if you could build this building why would you move it why, why would you move a building brick by brick to put it back in the same way in the same exact design that that just doesn't make sense there's also this tower has appeared. What's that doing there? This, this is a church. What does a church need a tower for? So, what, you know, I've been looking at lots and lots of photos and you see all these construction photos. And when you look at all the buildings that we have, so many of them are the same. Um, like I was saying, with churches and cathedrals, it's like they've all built off the same plan. And you can, you can literally take a bit of a, a church and you can change the, the, you know, it's like they've got a basic design. You know, like this one here, you can see it's got one, just one, you know, big column on it, big tower. But we see these and you see many of them and they have two towers or they have no towers. But it's always the same. It's like, it's, a, it's, it's like it's a floor plan and you can kind of add on, you know. So we're going to look at those, these in a minute. But here, see this one's got two towers and this same middle bit. You know, it's this, but it's only got one tower. So, is this, did they really move this building? Or is this just another one that would just happen to look exactly the same, in the same place? And they were like, oh, how do we explain that? And one was obviously mud, you know, one was in the mud. One was, you know, underground a bit. This one looks fairly level. You know, is this what, what's going on? Have they just said, oh... 
Yeah, no, we just moved it, but they actually just knocked this one over, cleaned this one up. Because with these old construction photos, you know, if the, if if we have buildings with the same design, so you can imagine if 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 people go into a territory and they might find ten buildings and they're all the same, but they might be in different states of disrepair, and so they get you know photos or whatever or drawings of them, and then they knock all the bad ones over that they can't fix and they keep the good ones. Then they tell us that the photos of the bad ones that they knocked over were actually construction photos. Now, so the Crystal Palace, they say in the Crystal Palace in London, they say they moved it. You know, I, it's just, it's, a, it's not, it doesn't make sense. If you could build that building, it would be easier to just build it from start than it would be to deconstruct it, move it, and then put it back up again. It just doesn't, you know, and you, you, you build, you're making a lot of problems for yourself when you move buildings. Things don't just fit back, you know, and they never just go back exactly the same way. You just, but if it's new, then it, so it doesn't make sense. So that's what I'm reckoning. I'm, this is what I think is that, that there was just the same designed buildings around and they're just knocking some over and saying, oh, we moved it or, oh no, they're construction photos. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, so where were we? Okay, so these are some churches. Let's have a look at some churches. All in Detroit. Again, massive stone you know, churches. We see everywhere. Look at these towers. Look at those. How antiquity do they look? This is Christchurch, Detroit. Uh, is it this one? Built in 1863. Look at the ceiling on this, and it's all painted. Look, it's all into these squares we see. Like we see these in cathedrals, in art galleries, everywhere. And look how tall it is. So that's inside that first church. This one, look at this red brick. Looks like a castle. Looks like it's way too short. <laughs> Our Lady of Rosemary Roman Church. This one. St. Anne Detroit Catholic Church. I you guess know, these massive, massive buildings. And you see this one goes way up here. And like I said, it's like they're all built from the same plan. You know, you have this middle bit. And then you can add a tower here if you want. You can add two on. Sometimes there's two at the back. Sometimes there's none. You know? Sometimes they're, you know, taller, shorter. I mean, that just might be the ground level, but who knows? This is inside it. Again, look at this half dome up here that we always... No, they're everywhere. Just, just the intricacy of it. It's just ridiculous. And then the size. Here's another one. They've decided with two domes. They've got slightly different steeples. But look at these. We've got the nice cross antennas on top. These are open, so they may have been turned into bell towers. You can see there's glass here, but not glass here. And look at those ceilings. Look at this. Is that not ridiculous? This is uh, the sweetest heart of Mary, Roman Catholic Church. Doesn't tell us. Oh, here we go. Built in 1893. I mean, that's just unbelievable. That the work that goes into that, and look how small the people are. Like, it's huge. Even down to these, I don't know what are these hanging things. I don't think they're lights, but maybe they're incense burners. But wow, look at this! Look at this stuff all up this steeple. Looks like one's broken off there, but and then just all these towers going up. Very antiquity. This one here too. So I've no, I might have to, <laughs> I might have to take a closer look at the closer look at the cathedrals because a lot of them in Detroit seem to have. So Nick, you'll have to get your camera out, give me some photos. Um, just at the cathedrals, they all seem to have these these bits coming out of them. Um, you know, these sort of these these these. And we saw it on this top one. 
Or is it this one? There. I'll leave a link to this page below and any, uh, any other pages we look at. But yeah, look, all up here. And that's a big building. That's inside. <laughs> look at this. Wow. That's cool. So I don't know how you could explain why you've got these booths in a church. You know, it, that's just a bit strange, isn't it? If it was someone of importance, they would be up the front. Now, there is a theory that these, you know, balconies, and especially these internal balconies, and, you know, these raised sort of platforms here, like that, is that supposed to be a raised another floor sort of balcony thing? You know, are they there so that smaller people can talk to bigger people face to face? Because that's a big building. <laughs> that's clearly a castle. I mean, come on. I mean, that may have had a big dome on it that's been knocked off. At some point it looks like it, it should have a dome on it. Uh, Woodward Avenue Presbyterian Church, and it's look at, that's just a big solid church, isn't it? Big solid building. Windows into the ground. Stairs going up. So there's some cool stuff in Detroit. Oh my God, that is that it's okay. So this is inside that church, guys. That's not a church. That's a theatre. That's a theatre. That's not a. It's got a pipe organ in it. I've never seen a double. I've never seen a double tiered church like that. Double story, like what? And how many parishioners did they have in, when was this built? 1911. And look at the work. I mean, that's just, oh my God, that's ridiculous. So yeah, Detroit is cool. Okay, look at this photo. See this? I mean, apart from the fact that it's a complete mud flutter. Red brick, right? And it looks to be part of this building. Doesn't it? It's completely joined on. And this isn't red brick. So, like, again, is this faced, is this red brick, but they've just faced it to look like this? Because that's what it's starting to look like. That looks like everything's just red brick and just finished off differently. Nice little dome down here as well. We're hiding in the corner, a bit of a tower. Another one over here. So that's interesting. They're kind of at opposite. Adjacent ends of the building. But yeah, so red brick right up against this. I mean, that just, just looks a bit strange, doesn't it? And here we go, look inside it. Oh my god, look how tall, look how tall that one is. The same stuff, look at this work. I mean, this, I don't know, is it cement or whatever, but you see it everywhere, it's just kind of shapes and stuff made out of something. And here's another one. First Congregational Church of Detroit, built 1844. Look at that. Off the ground, of course. Roman columns. Oh, I mean, <laughs> that's a, another big, solid building. And Old St. Mary's Church. Look at that. Look at these. Painted nicely. I mean, they're pretty cool looking. Towers, I think we've got another photo of this uh, a bit later. And that's the inside with these half domes that we see again everywhere. And this is the Fort Street Presbyterian Church again, just covered in antique with tech looking stuff. And all this, you know, what is all this? All these lines going up. And that's a funny tower. There's just some interesting stuff. Look at the building next to it, too. And is that a deck the whole way around? Wow, so you can, that's double storied as well, but it can, you know, in, back in whenever this was built, 1855, hang on, and completely rebuilt again 25 years later. Okay. 
why would you build it so big that you've only got to go back and build this tiny little <laughs> where you get one person, you know, on this floor, you know, sort of one person along the edge. It's just crazy. So there is some cool stuff in Detroit, Michigan. My gosh, it's just like Antiquitex City down there. Wow, look at that. That's a different design again, isn't it? But we see this a lot too, like it looks like the you know, building is going in and then they, they tee another building off the end or something. It's almost like they're adding components together, like it's a machine or something. Of course inside, you know, dome roofs. I mean, is that fit? I don't know. Airflow, electrons, I don't know. I mean, this has got to be something to do with flow. These shapes, I mean, that's ba it's basically half of Vesica Pisces, really, that shape, isn't it? So there. <laughs> Some amazing old churches in Detroit. Now, I've just got a few more photos to show you. <clears throat> Again, just this massive old building. This is, as you can see, got cars, but got horses, so it's probably 1910-ish. Look at the size of these people compared to this building. You know, it's serious. This is a city for giants in antiquity, and this is obviously complete mud flutter too. Again, look at this massive steeple. This looks like it's after World War One. Dome, massive, big red brick structure here. Uh, we just had a look at this church. This thing is huge. And look, it's just like got another little house just sitting there for some reason. And you can see this. That's copper. It's gone all green. So they actually haven't refaced that yet. But all this, I wonder if it's red brick that's been finished off. Uh, here's some photos from Nick. This is the uh, Capitol Building in um it's not detroit it is i will remember in a sec <laughs> but as you can see windows right at ground level and that's a huge building it's a big building there's one of it at night okay i'll show you some more in there in a minute this has popped up now this is what we saw at the start this is that art center again and this is just ridiculous. You can see towers up here, like all these Tartarian type buildings. Got windows in the ground, windows in the ground here. I'm not sure if that's a window, but obviously stairs going up. And just looking very top heavy, this building. It, it just looks like a castle with those massive turrets. This is a drawing of it. And again, this is what we get. Front elevation. Now, an elevation is what, you know, that's a word that you use in design and for plans. I mean, I suppose if you're an artist, you could say elevation, but, you know, this, you know, these things are so often put forward as plans and, and, you know, these are the plans, but there's, there's no numbers. There's no schematics or measurements on this. This is just a picture. This is what you get when someone rocks up, finds a building and draws it because it's complete. They've drawn it exactly like it looks. And again, you, know, you just can't find the plans for these places, or really who built them. If, if you're lucky, you'll get the name of an architect and maybe a builder. But you can't find where they got the materials, where they got the workers, you know, where they got skilled workers. Definitely never any detailed designs, any designs at all, really. Look at this thing. <laughs> you can see the windows going up around the tower here. So that, I mean, that looks like it's missing a few stories, doesn't it? Over the stories it could tell. <laughs> a mud flutter going down the hill. And again, this, you know, these, these look like they joined these buildings. See that a lot. I and mean, this could be, you know, they call it the art center. They could have called this a post office or a church. No one would have cared. <laughs> they could do the job for anything or anything with this thing. And again, it was covered in this antiquitech stuff right across the top. 
on the top of these, but see all across the top there. And you can see how small the people are. This is what they use now. So this is the new art center. <coughs> Excuse me. And as you can see, it's another old world mud flooded building. Now I'm not, it looks like it's got a flat roof here now. So I've got some internal pictures and they, they say that it's the same building, but that this may be another art center in Michigan. I'm not sure, but you can see the size of this lady compared to the size of this building. This looks like, like an ant. Uh, this, I'm pretty sure this is the one in um, Detroit. Looks like it's got a glass roof. You know, like many of those, is this, you know, part of that sort of glass house, a crystal palace kind of building phase. And of course, all this stuff and pretty big building. But yeah, this is, I'm not sure if this is the same building, but whatever it is, it's pretty spectacular. It's in Michigan, if it's not in Detroit. Look at this ceiling, look at the work just here above this window, just to get that done and to look, you know, then to finish it to look like that is just incredible. You can see how tall these doorways are. Because these are, you know, these are co uh, suits of armor up on pedestals and they're only sort of coming to here, the top of the so that must be like seven foot, you would think. There's space above there. So it's what eight, nine foot door, and they're filled in another foot. So that's ten foot or so there. Oh, well, that one's even taller. And then this, how how big is that? But <clears throat> yes, yeah, Detroit man looks like it's built for giants. Here's another building back in the day. Look at it. Now this has all been knocked over. This whole center um, bit. This is another photo from Nick. You can see, you know, this kind of brick, you know, and this is a solid brick, you know, probably a, I don't know how many stories, but I would say it's a four or five story building. And they just don't do stuff, you know, with brick like this anymore. And they don't build brick that big anymore. Everything's prefabbed. We, we can't do it. This is an old school and this is the old, um, parliament building, the old Capitol Hill building or Capitol building. Back in the day, you can see how monstrous these buildings are, because look at the horse and cart. This is the high school. Because that's what you would build if you were building a high school, right? You'd build that, and look at all the you know, antique tech again, everywhere. I mean, just look at that building. And they're saying it's a high school. Goes straight into the ground, but yeah, it's, look, look how big this horse and buggy is. You know that it's a big building, and again, there's not much around. Dirt on the streets. There's a couple of people here. I mean, there's no one really around. It's just that every building, though, there's big brick buildings. Now, this is another photo from Nick. This is the state capital. Um, of, hang on, I better check. Okay, you can stop yelling at me, people. It's St. Louis, St. Louis, uh, Michigan. And yeah, massive tower. I mean, that you see that on post offices everywhere, that exact tower. Here's another tower. You know, it's like, the, again, it's like the same design, but you can sort of mix and match the components. But we've got one of these, and then we've got a smaller one on top, big turret. And we look at this one, they've got sort of a bigger one there, and nothing than a dome. So it's it's almost starting to look like a Meccano set, these buildings. Like, like they're just different components. This is Henry Ford, the Henry Ford Museum, of course. This is it as well. Again, one of these. These look like the pagodas that you see. Uh, they, you know, we call them Chinese. Pagodas, a lot of people have them in their gardens made out of cement. They look like that. Now this one's interesting because, yeah, red brick. But we've got the columns and this kind of Greco-Roman, you know, kind of styling, which we we normally see this and it's all just covered in white. It's all been covered over. And this is red brick. So are they all red brick? And they've just left this because you can see that brick. And look at the thickness of that wall. 
Oh, look at that. <clears throat> and look at the work that's gone into that. They've cut all the bricks. I don't know how they do it on the right angle as wedges to get that perfect. But yeah, is everything red brick and just different facades, different covers. This again is the, <laughs> this is, they're telling me this is the Henry Ford Museum in the photo now. I don't know. This, it looks a bit strange. This look, I mean, this looks like something and then a house and a house and a house. Oh, right. So if you've been there, guys, I don't know if this is a real photo. It kind of doesn't look like it's the same tower. But I don't know what's going on here. Has he bought a whole street? So if you know anything about the Henry Ford Museum, let me know. Is that the whole thing? I mean, how big is this? <clears throat> uh, here's uh, yeah, some more photos of St. Louis. Again, you can just see the intricacy around here. I mean, was that the original door height? I mean, they've just put this in. Another old world building just sitting on the road. We've got these, I don't know, I'm going to have to... I still haven't found out the name for them. But I'm sure they've got... I don't know what they do. I don't know what they are. Something to do with energy flow resistors or something. But yeah, another huge old world building. And another... <laughs> this is the same building from the front, I think. This is when we saw the close-up of the door. And you can just see that's clearly one window. So was that just one doorway? And you know, how big how big was this? Because that looks like it should be taller again. It's like so many of them do. Um, another close up of the door. Just this work. Pretty cool. You just don't see anything like that anymore. So this is uh, a photo from the top of the Arch of St. Louis. Is it called the Freedom Arch? I can't remember. And this is the Capitol building. You can see it's pretty huge, block to block. And look at the size of that dome. It's massive. Compared to the building, it's huge. Now this, I think, is the side of the building. And just look at this, how they imprint these facades on them. I mean, that's a lot of work, and it looks like the domes have been switched over here, but there's just all this stuff on these buildings, just everywhere, all these little bits. Now, so is, is there just a lot more of these bits around here because the city's been inhabited longer and they didn't have as much chance to go in and smash it all down, and they had their fire in 1800 instead of 1850, like everyone else? <laughs> oh, and, yeah, windows. Uh, so this is one of the churches we saw before, I can't remember which one, but that's like a top view of it, and you can just see, again, we've got all this antiquity stuff going across the roof there, across here, see across here, all across here, and all up here, and even out there, and these things, they're everywhere. I mean, just look at the work that goes into these buildings, and, and people come along and knock them over. <clears throat> it's really quite sad. Uh, here's another one. You can see the size of this dome. Just massive. And, of course, doors going up and windows going down. I think we have a better photo of that. <laughs> again, and look at the spire on it. But, again, that could, that could be in any country in the world. No problem here. So see these windows, and you can see they've actually gone in and they've built walls around here, down here as well, and down here. Because this is a mud flooded building. This building is half under the ground, and if you leave the dirt up against it, you get problems with moisture and, you know, water ingression and all these types of things. You know, all the paint peels from the inside, you know, you get mould growing, it becomes dangerous. So they build these walls to keep the water off the walls of the buildings to fix it. So there you go. Oh, okay, so that looks like that is the end of the photos, guys. So there we go. Bit of a look at, um, yeah, Detroit, Michigan, Chicago. And as you can see, just massive buildings. 
um, and with a lot of Antiquatech on them and a lot of, you know, the finishing still seemed to be there. A lot of the stuff on, you know, on top of buildings and domes is there. A lot of the artwork on the inside of the, the, um, cathedrals and churches is still there. It's, there's a lot of cool stuff up in Chicago. So, you know, I'd say they walked in and found a lot of this stuff and they've just got rid of the stuff that was too mud flooded and kept the rest. So I hope you like that one. Thanks for spending some time with me, guys. And I'll catch you on the next upload. Bye for now.